It is time for baseball in Bavaria as at the confluence of the Danube Knob and Reagan Rivers, we are set to go for game number one of the 2022 World Baseball Classic qualifiers. As for the first time in a decade, the WBC returns to this venue, Armin Wolf Arena. And for the first time in five and a half years, the WBC returns, period. And we are so thrilled to be back as we kick things off here on morning number one from this gorgeous ballpark, this terrific venue here in the region of Bavaria in Germany and uh, set to go for South Africa and Spain. Alongside Ryan Roland Smith, former Team Australia and big leaguer, my name is Tyler Mon, uh, a guy who's pitched in a lot of these games, has been part of the World Baseball Classic, now here on the broadcasting side. You and I have nerves, like we've got something going on. These guys have something big going on. Absolutely, and you mentioned it too, five and a half years it's taken to get back to the international stage, and it all starts here in Regensburg for these teams trying to qualify to get to that big stage in March. Six teams in each of our qualifying pools here in 2022. We've got six here in Europe. We will have six further teams coming up in Panama City as this uh, year gets closer and closer to determining the final field for the 2023 WBC. The top two teams in each will move on. They're seeded based on their rankings from the WBC, and as you see, a modified double elimination tournament. So six teams who are here in Regensburg, two of those squads are moving on. It's really important to get out on a good foot on day one. It really is, and, and the first game really sets you up. South Africa and Spain, they don't know a whole lot about each other, but one thing to keep in mind in, as this tournament goes is some of the pitch limitations. So you've got to be really careful if you're a manager of one of these teams. If you've got someone who's cruising, you may have to take them out or mix and match and figure this out because it, there is some limitations there for sure. As you see, South Africa and Spain kick things off. Great Britain and France are coming up in our night game tonight, 7 o'clock local time. The winners move on to tomorrow where they take on the top two seeded teams from this group uh, who have day one off, Germany and the Czech Republic. The losers await their fate coming up later on for Saturday's matchup and game five and game six. So these first days are really, really important. And Ryan, as you noted, you get a starter out there, he's throwing well. Depending on what you want to do with him later on in the tournament, you've got to be able to manage that. Yeah, and you have to figure out what your depth is too. Some of these teams, look, we, we spoke to the managers yesterday, and a big thing was these guys haven't really played with each other. Some of these guys are just meeting each other for the first time. So you really have to figure out what your depth is on your roster, especially on the pitching side. There you see Nelson Prada. He is the pilot of this Spain squad. will be looking to uh, make a run through the qualifiers. Spain has been in this position before in the qualifiers. South Africa, like Wise has been in this position before in the qualifiers as this is a South Africa group that uh, really knows each other very well and they are led by Andrew Berglund. We got a chance to talk to him, the South Africa manager, along with Nelson Prada yesterday. And the thing that stands out, I think, is just the enthusiasm of everybody who's involved with this event. Yeah, and, and you know, for the South African team that you mentioned too, some of these guys have been around in this program since the inception of the World Baseball Classic. Spain, you've got a mixed bag of guys from Venezuela, a couple you know, native born uh, from, from Spain, but yeah, the, the enthusiasm is through the roof right now and ready to go for game one. There's a handful of players on the South Africa team that were on this squad the last time they qualified for the WBC, which was in 2009. There are five players who were on this team who were on that team as well, and that's something that they very much want to taste again. They have not been through the qualifiers and made it on through, but this squad will be looking to roll back to the WBC for the first time since 2009. There you take a look at that South Africa lineup as Jonathan Phillips leads things off at third, followed by his left side of the infield teammate, Tyler Smith at short. Kyle Botha, who's a stalwart on the South African national team program, He's behind the plate. Then Christian Byers, the designated hitter, cleaning up. Josh Hendricks at first. Tyrone Milne in left. Benny, Benji Smith in center. Jason Carlisi in right. And Victor Ngope, who is the younger brother, of course, of the first African-born major leaguer. Gift Ngope. Victor gets the start at second base and batting ninth. We were talking with Andrew Berglund yesterday. He said when he first got to know South Africa baseball, Victor Ngope was a young kid. He was a teenager. He said he was about 120 pounds dripping <laughs> wet. And he said, yeah, so he's put on like 20 pounds right. since then. Right. Still a small guy. He's the prototypical middle infield. Yeah, and you mentioned too his brother, the fact he couldn't be here. They, they are missing some key players. Brother's the first native-born South African to get to the big league. So, yeah, a lot of, it, like, a lot of excitement. There's so many storylines. We'll get to all these as this tournament rolls on. Plate meeting right now between these two managers as Spain's national squad takes the field and we are just about set to go on what has turned to an all right day here in Regensburg. The start of this tournament, we've been uh, dealing with a little bit of weather, we'll say. It's, uh, it's fall in Europe in a country that gets some rain and we have had some rain that we have worked through the last couple of days. 
Murray Cook, who is, uh, I don't even know how you describe Murray Cook. There are people who are like legends in their job. Murray Cook is like the godfather of fields and baseball field construction and maintenance around the world. I was worried about the rain, and then I showed up and saw Murray was here, and I was like, we're fine. Well, you said he's the mercenary. He's he like is. the guy who goes to yeah. every international event. He's on top of it all, you know, dealing with obviously different scenarios, situations around the globe. But, hey, he's, he's the guy to go to for sure. And he is uh, the one who has gotten this field looking as good as it does right now. This ballpark, this facility are incredible. And the guy who will stride atop the mound for the first time in a World Baseball Classic game for any country since 2017 with the U.S. celebration its championship at Dodger Stadium is Ronald Medrano, the right-hander. Yeah, and for Ronald Medrano, he turns 27 tomorrow. He does have a little bit of professional experience. And look, for these South African teams, the scouting reports is going to be minimal in these first couple games. So you really have to get a good feel for what you're seeing in front of you from that dugout. So uh, for Ronald Medrano, the same thing goes for him too. Facing some of these hitters. Does know a whole lot about this South African squad. But um, we'll see what starts in this game one. One of the things that we talked about yesterday with Andrew Berglund is that for these South Africa players, they don't see a ton of velocity. A lot of guys in that dugout have played pro ball. They've seen some of that. But part of their pre-camp and during camp preparation work was just trying to see as much velocity as possible. They came to Germany 10 days or so early and just found pro, pro ball guys who were in Germany to throw live BP to them so they could start getting ramped up for the velocity they'll see here. Yeah, it is crucial in these situations. It's so different to what, when you watch Major League Baseball, when you watch professional baseball anywhere, it's so crucial to get to game speed and you have such a small window to do so. We are just about set to go, just past 105 in the afternoon here local time as the leadoff man for South Africa, Jonathan Phillips, steps into the batter's box, ready to kick off this 2022 World Baseball Classic qualifier in Regensburg. And the first pitch on the way from the right-hander, Medrano, is there for strike number one, and we are underway. Our four-man umpiring group this afternoon is Roberto La Madrid from Mexico behind the plate. Sam Birch from the United States is at third base. His countryman, Mark Winter, is at second, and Kyohei Makita from Japan is over at first. Let's go, man. We've so, waited around a long time. We have. This. We really have. I'll get a chance to play in the last World Baseball Classic 2017. There's nothing better than international baseball. Not only that, you played in the qualifier as well, helping Team Australia to advance as uh, another foul away by Jonathan Phillips. And I mean, this is a pressure packed event because, and we were talking with uh, all of these managers yesterday, but especially Team France manager, Bruce Bochy, and we'll see him this evening. You can't manage this the same way you manage a regular season game in pro ball, whether it's the big leagues or the minor leagues. He said it's just like the playoffs. There is no margin for error starting day one. And he, it was refreshing to hear him say that too because sometimes, you know, if you're a, a, a country or, you know, some sort of you know, a baseball confederation, you see a guy like Bruce Bochy and you know the experience. And you're like, oh, great, big league manager. Then you roll into a situation like this. You have to make sure that they understand the the requirements are so different to 162 game season. Breaking ball into the dirt to put the count at two and two on Jonathan Phillips. Phillips, one of the stalwart guys as part of this national team program, his current team in South Africa, the Belleville Tigers. He's 36 years old. He has played uh, for the South African national team for a while, but not just him, his family as well. His father, Alan, his brother, Anthony, as he swings and can't get a piece there. And out number one is strikeout number one as Ronald Medrano will sit down the leadoff man in the first. Boy, you've seen the kitchen sink from Medrano. We've seen three different pitches. That was a changeup in that strikeout. Again, you see the entire South African dugout up on the top step. You mentioned some of the emotion going on right now to get back to the stage. Also, too, just to get a feel for what you're facing. Never seen this guy before. You've never faced Medrano. Never, never seen him live. Could he get that feel quick? Tyler Smith, one of the younger guys in the lineup today, who's played most recently in the Czech Extra Liga for Brno. Takes that pitch there at the knees for a strike. Czech Republic team is in the house. They won't play until tomorrow, but their guys are here taking in game number one. Some Germany players here to see their host crowd as well. A check and no swing says our third base umpire Sam Birch. The count 
gaining a ball on the left-handed hitting shortstop Tyler Smith. Skied foul, third base side. We'll get a chance to tell you a lot about this facility over the coming days, but Armin Volf Arena here in Regensburg is really kind of the, the home of not just baseball in Regensburg, but the Bavarian region and Germany at large in a lot of ways. This complex is amazing. This main stadium here holds about 3,200, including standing room at full capacity. But not only is it a ballpark, it's a foul tip into the glove there by Smith, puts him down as the second strikeout of the day. A nice job by Gabriel Lino to hang on to that one behind the plate. And two gone for Kyle Bolta, the catcher for South Africa. But this is also a, a youth academy, sports academy as well, which produced maybe the best known German ball player in the world today. And that, of course, is Max Kepler, the Minnesota Twins, who came out of this academy in his uh, his amateur days. Tyler, I do have to admit, I had no idea. I knew there was the German heritage, but I only found this out yesterday. Now, we got a crash course on German baseball yep. and the scene here and everything you talked about. But the fact that Max Kepler, born and raised here in Germany, and now he's a he's an established major league player. I had no idea that was the case. I thought maybe you know his parents right. moved him over when he was a kid. Amazing. And not only that, but we hear so often stories of players who were born in Germany because you know the classic example is Edwin Jackson, who is a, a guy who's a champion of right. international baseball, was on that U.S. Olympic team last year, uh, and was one of my quietly favorite guys to watch over the course of his career. Edwin Jackson was born on an Air Force base as his, I believe his father served. So he was technically born in Germany, but you know, was raised traveling around the world as, as part of his father's career. But Max Kepler, born, you know, a, a family uh, that was uh, a resident of this region and got a chance to come through this academy and, and learn baseball at a young age. And he really is the guy. We were talking with members of that German national team yesterday and we'll see them tomorrow. He's the guy now that everybody can point to to say, that can be you. You work hard enough, you're talented enough. The pathway exists as a liner out to second is snared out there by Oscar Angulo. And three up, three down goes South Africa in the top of the first as Kyle Botha is retired on the hot shot the other way. Headed to the bottom of the first, South Africa scoreless in Spain coming up. Oh, there are lights up there. Yeah, I wonder if there's a switch around here somewhere.
Regensburg, we are set for the bottom of the first inning as Spain's lineup, as announced by manager Nelson Prado, will lead things off with a former big leaguer. Angel Beltre is in the top spot, then one of the most exciting young prospects in baseball. Now with the Cincinnati Reds, shortstop Noel V. Marte. Edison Valerio will bat third. He is at third. Then it's Jesus Ustari. He's the first baseman in the cleanup spot. Christopher Quitzer will be the DH batting fifth. Justin Connell's in right, hitting sixth. Lester Galvan in left field, bat seventh. Gabriel Lino, the catcher, hits eighth. And Oscar Angulo is at second base. And those will be the bats to face the right-handed arm, Justin Erasmus, who gets the nod today. This is a guy you're really familiar with, Ryan. Yeah, Justin Erasmus, born in Johannesburg, lives in Australia. He's got some professional experience on with the Boston Red Sox. He's 32 years old. I think the big thing for Justin, watching him throw, is get that ball underneath the barrel. That's going to be key for him. Not a whole lot of velocity, but he does have some good movement on that fastball. Live at the bottom of the strike zone and get as deep into this game as he can. He could not have been a better team ambassador for us to talk to yesterday. We spent some time in front of the dugout. It's a nice breaking ball there. Fouled, I guess, off of the mask of Kyle Botha. Didn't see that live, but we'll check on Botha as he nods to the dugout. Seems to be okay. But we talked to Justin yesterday uh, in front of the third base dugout on the second field here, the backfield during South Africa's team workout. And he was so great to talk to. And the thing that I love that he said was you walk into most clubhouses and there are kind of clicks and groups and stuff. He said, this team, we're a family. Everybody is a native-born South African player. As a line drive to left is the first base hit of the 2022 World Baseball Classic qualifier. Angel Beltre has got himself on with a single. Yeah, you mentioned that too. And one unique thing about the South African team, they're all, all born and raised essentially yep. uh, in South Africa. You've got a couple guys like Justin Erasmus moved to Australia when he was seven. He comes from a baseball family. But it's one of these things where, you know, I mean, the majority of these guys have been playing it on this stage forever, for a long time. You've got some serious veterans on this team, Justin Erasmus being one of them. So that brings in a guy who I know a lot of Cincinnati Reds fans are probably tuned in from back home to watch specifically, and that is the shortstop prospect Noel V. Marte, who was formerly a top prospect in the Seattle Mariners organization. He was traded just prior to the trade deadline this year uh, in a big deal, and now in the Reds system is starting to really impress. Uh, still at kind of the lower levels of the minor leagues. He's been a low A and high A this year, but uh, to be someone who is – in a system where fans are really excited to see that next wave, this is a guy you can hang a lot of hopes on. Yeah, well you mentioned him being a Seattle Mariner and essentially the biggest trade chip of this year's MLB trade deadline is this guy in, this, in the box right now representing Spain, but what an explosive player, ton of power, plays shortstop, excellent range at, at short, but you know, when you're watching this guy play right now, and again, we're seeing him on the world stage, but you, you are going to see him on the major league stage in just a matter of years. Talked to Nelson Prado, the Spain manager yesterday, and we asked him a lot about, you know, his early impressions of Noel V. Marte. It's swing and a miss there. We'll put the count at one and two on him. And he said one thing that he really likes is you just see immediately it's a big body, it's a big frame. He hits for a lot of power. And that's not super easy when you're young and you're still kind of figuring out your mechanics as a player like this. And it's a presence as well. I mean, you come to a place like this, and again, if you're Justin Erasmus, who you haven't been in that professional circuit for a long time, and then you have this 60 feet away, that's just a different feel, and he has that. It's very similar to... Throw gets away up the first base side, and that'll put Beltre at at least second. Now he's digging around that bag, headed for third, and the throw there is cut off. So it's a two-base error that'll be charged to Erasmus on the throw, and a big spot for Spain now with a man 90 feet away and nobody out in the first. Uh, we talked about this in the open, too. There is really no margin for error, and I think for Justin Erasmus, when you've got Nuelvi Marte in the box, you have to keep that runner at first base the best you can. Plays like this, they'll come back and haunt you later on this game and later on this in this uh, qualifier. The other part of this too, Tyler, and I've been here before on, on a team where, you know, it's all of a sudden the game speeds up because you put that, you know, country across your chest, your heart rate's up, you're facing some of the best players in the world. And that is a big potential out on a ball in the air as Victor Angope will call off everyone and keeping that ball on the infield. Strands Beltre, at least for the moment, over there at third and one gone in the bottom of the first to bring up Edison Valerio. 
It's also big. You know, you hear this a lot in, in hockey or in soccer. You get that first one out of the way. You get the right. first save out of the way if you're a goalie, and you feel like then you're into the flow of a game. I feel like in a spot like that for Justin Rasmus, you get that first out. You're still dealing with a man at third, but now you feel like, all right, we're in it. Absolutely. I mean, you know, look, the adrenaline's through the roof right now. You, you, and, again, like I said, the game is on a different speed when you have that country across your chest. That went out of play, first base side. 328 feet down the lines here in Regensburg, 400 feet to dead center at Armin Wolf Arena. This ballpark built in the late 1990s. It has been gorgeously renovated and added on to over the years, including this year. There's a brand new building beyond the first base side, some concession space, some uh, kind of lounge suite area up on the, the second level. One spinning Valerio out of the box. This place is incredible. Last played host to qualifying action in 2012 to this ballpark here in Regensburg. And you can tell still as the 1-1 broken bat flare on a couple of hops over to third. The, the pride that they take in that event that they hosted 10 years ago is still so evident is that I guess didn't break the bat of Valerio. The, there are still pictures framed all around this ballpark, you know, panoramas of the sellout crowds for Germany's games and all that. And we're expecting one of those tomorrow night. Um, it's really cool to see not only how much pride this venue still has in that, but how much more excitement this region still has to be here this week. Here's the one two from Erasmus and a call strike three on the inside corner. So he freezes Valerio for his first strikeout, and Justin Erasmus now one out away from getting out of a first inning jam. Yeah, we're talking about how big that Marte pop up in the infield, but how about this? Runner on third, you need to strand him those little moments. Justice from Erasmus, Erasmus gets ahead in the count, throws a fastball inside. So, with two gone now, Jesus Usariz will step in, the first baseman. Big bat out of the middle of this Spain order for Nelson Prada and his guys. That's a changeup. Justice Erasmus, that's a pitch. Again, when you're trying to get into that rhythm, even with your, with your catcher as well, just trying to get that feel, new field, everything. I mean, situation where you just want to get that. What's that secondary pitch? What are we working with here when we get in certain counts? Good block well, back, back there by Bota. And again, it just speeds up on you because you've had minimal time together. You've had minimal lead up at this level. You mentioned it too, trying to get guys throwing with some velocity to, to get you used to this stage. We're going to see that too tonight. We've got Great Britain, a lot of affiliated players. We've already heard about the 95 pluses coming out of that roster. 2-0 from Erasmus. Three balls and no strikes. Being very careful right now with Jesus Usariz. Jesus played professionally for parts of six seasons between the Detroit Tigers and St. Louis Cardinals organizations. But over those six years, he played 251 games. His numbers were good, but just not on the field quite as much as I'm sure those systems would have liked to see him. And he'll take a four-pitch walk here the first of the day on either side. He's got that open base pitching very carefully. Nothing but secondary pitches right here. Another breaking ball, 3-0. Straight up telling, telling you this is a guy you don't want to let beat you. So the DH, Chris Kreitzer, will step in. Rasmus coming up on 20 pitches here in the bottom of the first. And that is something that comes into consideration early on because the, the pitch limits uh, in this WBC, and we'll talk about this in more specifics as the, the days go on, but you, know, you cross over the 50 pitch threshold, you're limited for when you can return. It's four days out of action after that as he breaks off a terrific off-speed pitch there to get the count in his favor at 0-2. 
Yeah, and, and this is something you really need to monitor as well. If you've got a guy like Justin Erasmus who looks like he's got a good feel and he's carving up a lineup and you're thinking to yourself, hold on a minute, how come we're going to the bullpen in this situation? Well, essentially it's because of some of the pitch limitations. All of a sudden he goes over 50, then uh, you've got to factor in some of the days off. We're going to get into more of that as we get going here. But that's something really to monitor. Who are the guys? Sometimes, too, a team like South Africa... You may have your one or two guys, your arms coming out that you, that you can really rely on. Then you quite don't know what you're going to get, whether it's a young pitcher or someone who hasn't really excelled at this level. So the depth is really important as well. Erasmus trying to put him away and escape the first. One, two, breaking ball out to second. And Gope on the backhand. And Justin Erasmus does a masterful job. A fist pump from him as he heads to the dugout on the third base side. Beltre got to third with nobody out, and he stays there. We're headed to the second scoreless in Regensburg. DH Chris Byers will lead things off for South Africa as we head into the top half of the second inning. Back at Armin Volf Arena in Regensburg here in Bavaria. My name is Tyler Mon alongside Ryan Roland Smith. We're through one frame here in the 2022 WBC qualifier. Swing and a foul tip on the first pitch of the top of the second. We know that our good buddy, John Palmarosi, is awake and tuned in because he already <laughs> tweeted he is. that we were starting. And uh, no bigger fan of the WBC on the planet than that guy. He's already gotten us some some intel on some of the top prospects, some of the players who are going to be involved in this tournament. Yeah, yeah. Love that guy. <laughs> Tyler, you know, it's funny. Yes, so we're, we're doing the rounds, right? We're trying to get some – we're trying to get our intel, and all of a sudden one of the PR – directors says oh hey by the way i've already sent some notes to um jp morosi <laughs> they're like hold on a minute <laughs> what <laughs> he's doing our work for us i love it uh the absolute greatest the greatest <laughs> ball and two strikes on the leadoff man chris byers here the dh that one down in the dirt byers a cape town product Coming up on his 28th birthday next spring. And this South Africa roster, I mean, this is a group that has played as far flung a baseball pathway as possible. Guys who played here in Europe, they've played in the States, they've played in Latin America. Grounder out to short where Noel V. Marte will get his first look in. MLB Pipeline's number 18 overall prospect gets the throw to first to retire. Byers one up, one down in the second. Yeah, he can swing it and he can pick it at shortstop as well. The full package, plus defense, plus range. 
It's already evident, too, with the South African team against Medrano. That velocity is going to be a factor here. You can see him blowing that fastball by him and then getting that secondary stuff. Can hit the ball on the ground, but. Five see hitter. Josh Hendricks for a swing and miss. Yeah, you can see right there. This, this is going to be a factor. Again, it, it's just something that's going to take you a couple innings just to get that feel. Different velos, different looks. Oh, one grabs the outside corner. One of the things with this South Africa squad, too, is getting regular reps at bats, looks at pitching and all that. That's what was so important about their 10-day pre-tournament work, the, the camp that they got. They got a chance to play multiple games against some of the other teams that are involved in this qualifier as Hendricks has gone on three pitches. But that's big because as we talked about hot starts being so important, you can't afford to wait until the second day or the third day of this tournament to start adjusting to the pitching because by that point you could be so far behind the eight ball that you're not going to get another shot. For sure. I think too, and again, you just see three fastballs blown by Hendricks. There's an off-speed awesome pitch right there. I think we talk about it all the time, getting a feel for that pitch, knowing what the other guy's going to do. But when you're pitching in tournament play like this and you can smell the fact that someone's going to struggle to catch up, you just go for the throat. Easy one, two, three inning there for Ronald Madrano. Just a handful of pitches. He has yet to top 25 through the first couple of frames. And we are headed to the bottom of the second inning. A good one to get us underway in Regensburg, South Africa and Spain, scoreless through one and a half. the second inning in there for a called strike to Justin Connell, the right fielder batting out of the sixth spot in the order for Spain. It's 6-7-8 here in the bottom of two. Connell, Lester Galvan, the left fielder, and Gabriel Lino, the catcher. As you might look at Justin Connell and think, that guy looks like an American ball player. He was raised in the U.S., but he was born in Barcelona. and He was an 11th round pick of the Washington Nationals back in 2017. A guy who's still active in that system as he smokes this one in the air to center. But Benji Smith is right there to snare it. One up, one down. Yeah, at some point, too, Tyler will touch on some of the playing rules as far as who is eligible to play for what team. Usually involves a passport or where you're born. Involves a parent with a passport as well. It's amazing too, and something we, we you know dived into with the, some of the managers yesterday. How they seek out some of these guys if they have that you know the heritage from that country they're, they're seeking out. Now Lester Galvan, the other corner outfielder and left today, who takes ball one. 
We'll talk about this this evening during the France Great Britain matchup, but I was like moved to the point of almost being choked up when we were talking about things with Drew Spencer line drive out to short and Tyler Smith timing the leap as he waited. I thought almost left a second early, but he snares that thing at the apex of his jump and that will retire Galvan. Wow, time perfectly right here from Tyler Smith. And that's a good sign too, keeping that pitch count healthy for Justin Erasmus. Big play right here. Pitch was hit on the line, able to get up just in time, snag that thing. But Drew Spencer, the manager of the, the Great Britain national team, was telling us one of the things that they've done to kind of get their guys to, to bond, you know, everybody getting to know each other these first few days, he said, we have our guys tell their their GB baseball story. Mm -hmm. Tell us what this means to them and why. And, you know, we're hearing stories about players whose, whose parents moved, you know, if they grew up in the United States, let's say, moved across the country with their siblings who they were born in England with and so raised the kids who are now on this team, you know, with the a British influence in their lives or whatever uh, it means most to them to, to incorporate uh, from their backgrounds. And that stuff beyond just sharing something that's kind of intimate to yourself uh, as an athlete, that does bond you with the other guys on your team who have similar experiences. I loved hearing that. When he talked about that yesterday, I said, man, that is such a smart idea. Now, I was on Team Australia where everyone there was born and raised. A lot of guys who obviously live in the U.S. now and had a chance to play in the big leagues and play throughout the minor leagues. But to hear that, it, it just gives you a connection to – the, the name across your chest as well, you know, and wearing that flag on your hat, wearing that, that Great Britain flag, because if you're an American kid and all of a sudden you get a chance to play on the stage, but you do have that heritage and you, you roll into this, you want it to mean something. And I think when, when he said that, man, it, it really it hit a spot for me. Yeah. And, and it just makes you, as a team, as a teammate, you look around, you say, okay, we're all in this together and we all have that connection. 2-1 up the middle and into center field. So the first hit of the tournament for Gabriel Lino, who is aboard. And that will send it to the ninth spot and Oscar Angulo. Two out knock. Next pitch will be number 30 for Justin Erasmus. Already we're seeing plenty of contact, good contact from Team Spain early on. I think with Justin Erasmus, you take a look at the counts too. When he's slipping behind the count, looks pretty hittable. But when he can get 0-1-0-2, make a pitch, he's in good shape. Angulo takes ball one. You mentioned that 30 pitch threshold. Again, we'll talk about some of the pitching regulations, but that will qualify him to have a day off for tomorrow. 1-0 shot to right, that's down for a base hit. And back-to-back -back two out singles, put runners at first and second for Spain in the second. So back at the top of the order now for Angel Beltre. Victor Angope, the younger brother of the first native-born South African player and the first native-born player from the African continent to reach Major League Baseball. He's out there at second today. Gift Ngope, you're probably familiar with his story if you're tuned into this game. Gift unable to, to make it this time around for the WBC, at least here for the qualifiers. I would imagine that if the South Africa team moves on to 2023, there's probably a fairly good chance we'll get a, an opportunity to watch Gift Ngope again. But those two guys, what a, an amazing story. And, you know, South Africa's... Baseball uh, Federation posted a video on, on Instagram today talking to Victor about what this means from, from the workout yesterday. And he said, we're you know ready to show the world what we've got. As a bouncer out his direction on the slide, knocks it down. That'll keep everybody on the infield, but it allows Beltre to reach in now three straight singles with two gone and the bases are loaded for who else? Noel V. Marte. Hey, good job here from Victor Ngope to keep this in front of him too. That saved the run from scoring, that's number one. Obviously not being able to come up with a ball right here, but again, all these plays are so crucial in these early runs in these games. Good job right there to hold onto that ball. He's got no play anywhere. Yeah, we talked to Andrew Berglund too, the manager of the South African team, missing some key players on this roster.
So here's Marte. Second ranked prospect now in the Cincinnati Reds organization after that trade that brought him from the Seattle Mariners as part of a deal that sent big league starter Luis Castillo to Seattle for the playoff push for the M's, a team you know a little something about, having spent the bulk of your big league career there and now working on TV broadcasts with Root Sports in the, up in the Northwest. And this is a guy who I know a lot of Mariners fans were bummed to lose, but for Reds fans, very excited to see Noel V. Marte as he fouls one back in a way that makes me realize that a perfect angle foul ball could smash me right in the yeah, face. I was just about to say, <laughs> man, I was listening to you talk about Noel V. Marte and all of a sudden I saw that good contact bit. But you mentioned it too, a lot of Mariners fans, it was gut-wrenching when you see his name at the top of that, those four prospects given up. But in return, Luis Castillo, he has been dominant for the Seattle Mariners. So that's just the price you pay for these big trades. But again, just it's just such a pleasure to get a chance to watch this guy on this kind of stage. In this big moment, two loaded bases. 1-1. One, one. Fouled. Probably gives you a little bit of a heart jumping into your throat if you're a South Africa fan, seeing that ball rip down the line, but wide of third. So now the count in Erasmus' favor at a ball and two strikes as he tries to wriggle out of another jam here in the second. And nowhere to put Nueve Mate. This is a guy you would pitch around in this situation, but nowhere to put him loaded load bags. One, two on the way. Staying alive. You can see him, he's been aggressive too. This is a chance for Justin Erasmus. Expand the strikes and get out of the get out of the middle in this situation. A lot of foul balls. His timing's a little off right now, you can tell. Dealing with different velocities, what he's used to seeing. Have to get out of the middle of that strike zone. Here's the one two. Skied on the infield again. Opportunity on the left side. Tyler Smith calling and catching, and that will do it in the second. Spain with men in scoring position in the first two. Nothing across yet. We're headed to the third, still scoreless. the third inning and a good one to get us started in the 2022 World Baseball Classic qualifier in Regensburg back at Armin Wolf Arena headed to the top of the third it'll be 7-8-9 for South Africa Benji Smith to lead things off the center fielder South Africa's gone six up six down against Ronald Madrano who heads out for his third frame and Benji Smith will try to get things started from the latter third of the order Spain is threatened in the first two they had a man on third nobody out in the first inning couldn't bring him home Three straight singles with two gone in the second. They strand three on the base pass. South Africa looking to get someone on for the first time. Here's our 
First offering on the way to Benji Smith is grooved in there for strike one. Smith's got the right blinker on, his pocket pulled out on the backside, is wearing the familiar green and yellow of South Africa. This is, you played against South Africa in the final game of the 2016 World Baseball Classic qualifier for the Australian national team. It's a very similar look as the 1-1. It shot the other direction and down for a base hit. Not only that, it's past Justin Connell and all the way to the wall. Extra bases for Benji Smith, who will pull into second. South Africa's got its first hit and its first man in scoring position to lead off the third. And you see Benji Smith fired up. We saw in the first two innings there's going to be a struggle to make solid contact. You can see the velocity was overwhelming. This is good hitting right here. Letting that ball travel a little bit on him, seeing it. Backspinning that ball to right center field. Good chance right here with none out runner in scoring position. Justin Connell taking such a shallow angle to that ball. I think he thought maybe there was some more tail to it that he could get there with it on the fly. And as that dropped down, it was going to run all the way. And it gets to the wall to put Benji Smith in second. And now Jason Carelsi with the opportunity to give his team its first run of this qualifier. 0-1 on it. And you will, see, you will see a little bit more manufacturing of runs. You may see bunts laid down. Again, every inning, every run is crucial, makes a difference. This is not like watching Major League Baseball where you're playing 162 games. And that's why he stepping off a little fake balk to second base just, just to see if he lays the bunt, if he, if he you know, goes, looks like he's going to lay a bunt down. Slide that hand up the barrel. Especially as you get to the bottom of the lineup as well. Madrano pitching to a batter from the stretch for the first time, and he put strike two in there at the knees, and Carlsley didn't think so. He turned around and was surprised to be now in an 0-2 hole. That's a big pitch right there. We talked about it again. You could see him looking to lay a bunt down, get something, put the ball in play, get that runner to third base. That pure manufacture, but getting that second strike makes it tough now. Are also waiting. Up and in. Now they're going to check back in at second behind Smith. In with the right hand safely. Can that extra step? That's a good throw down a second from Gabriel Lino. Yeah, you can see Benji Smith just getting that extra lead. Remember, you're kind of shuffling off that line because the bunt play was in order. Obviously, he didn't show bunt. Long pause from Madrano. 1-2. Carelsa takes that one away. So he's climbed back even in the count now. Two balls and two strikes. Carlson from Cape Town, back home, the Athlone Athletics, his 2022 club. 2-2. Two -two. Three balls and two strikes. This is a really good at bat. Yeah, it really is. And put it this way. First of all, he has a situation where they're going to put the bun on. Obviously, he gets two strikes. Now, all of a sudden, you've worked your way into a 3-2 count, not being overly aggressive. You know you have that open base at first base as well. So you can expand the strikes on a little bit. But you have to make Madrano. We've already seen this. You have to make him throw some pitches, get that pitch count up. Full count. On the way. And ball four to Jason Garelso. What an at-bat. As his first plate appearance of the 2022 WBC results in a walk. And it's first and second now with nobody gone for Victor Ngope. Big chance here for South Africa early in this game. You can see Medrano, the command goes a little bit, gets in that stretch for the very first time in this game. And you're going to get a visit from the pitching coach. Juan Rincon will head out from the first base dugout.
this is a situation. Not so much talking about. Yeah, you have the, the bunt play could be in order, obviously, telling the defense, make, just play against that butt. I think it's just to get his heart rate down a little bit, just get him reset. Big spot right here. You're thinking to yourself, look, it's a third inning. You know, big deal. But, again, in these tournament games, it's game one. Every out, every inning, every run makes a huge difference. This Spain team has gotten a chance to play in qualifiers before. They have been in these big moments on the international stage over the last two editions of the WBC, but they have yet to win a game in the main WBC. They qualified in 2013. They went 0-3 in round one and got bounced from that tournament. They were back in the qualifier in 2017. They didn't win a game there. So this is kind of a, a redemption story for a lot of these teams here. As Angope lays down a very good bunt. Third base side, miscommunication. Valerio's throwing a terrific pick on the backhanded scoop over at first by Ustaris, which saved at least one, but a successful sacrifice bunt from Victor Angope, and it is second and third with one gone here in the third. And this is a good bunt right here. Again, you're dealing with the, the velocity. Good, a good uh, pitch to bunt on again. Now all of a sudden you got second and third with the top of the lineup coming back up with Jonathan Phillips. So they're in a good spot right here, the South Africans. You know, for a moment, Ronald Madrano was pointing to the third base bag, telling Edison Valerio to go back there. He was going to try to get the lead runner, and those two almost collided over on the left side. So it's a good break for Spain that they were able to get the out as Ngope sacrifices himself. But now you've got your leadoff guy back at the plate, Jonathan Phillips with Smith at third and Carelsa at second. Early on, there's been some grumbling about the strike zone from each side, but what that always tells me as somebody who's not nearly as advanced of a baseball observer as you, Ryan Roland Smith, at least there's consistency there. If a zone is not necessarily the zone that you want, but you're, it's being called consistently both ways, that's a good thing. For sure, and I think to yeah, look, you're in a big spot right here. Jonathan Phillips, you can see his reaction. That was clearly, that breaking ball was clearly a strike. Yeah. Good pitch, by the way. Yeah. So you're going to try and push a little bit. Try, <laughs> try and push, the, push on the, uh, the emotions of the, of the umpire behind the plate as well. One and one on Phillips, who struck out in the first inning to lead off this game. Swing and a bouncer left side. It eats up Valerio for a moment, but his throw will be in time, and everybody stays put. Two gone. A big out right there for Team Spain in this situation. Ground ball, nothing doing. Benji Smith at third base. So the task will fall to Tyler Smith now, who struck out swinging his first time to the plate. Valerio just caught on that in-between hop. But, you know, just like we saw with Victor Ngope in the bottom half of last inning, to be able to knock a ball down and keep it on the infield. Now, in this circumstance, Valerio does get the out. Victor Ngope did not. But it keeps a run off the board. And the first pitch there for a strike to Tyler Smith. Well, how big was that, that play from Victor? We talked about it, too, when it happened. But just keeping that ball on the infield, keeping it in front of you, not letting that ball get away from you in, into the outfield, even if, it, if, even if you bobble it, saved a run right there. Way even a miss there from Smith, and he finds himself in an 0-2 hole. And already it's ob obvious from both teams these runs are going to come at a premium. Medrano trying to wriggle out of the first jam he's faced in this WBC qualifier opener. 0-2 is fouled back. You know, and it gets us into the flow of this tournament with a good start because, you know, early on, Spain gets a runner to third, nobody out in the first inning. And if you're South Africa, you want to make sure that you're able to keep that wave from overwhelming you early on in a game. They did that as the bouncer over to first is easily handled by Ustaris, and that will do it. Medrano with the big fist bump this time as he and his team head back to the dugout. Through two and a half, we're scoreless in Regensburg.
Heart of the order for Span as we head to the bottom of the third inning in a scoreless game at Armin Wolf Arena in Regensburg. South Africa and Spain dueling through the first two and a half. South Africa with its first threat offensively last inning at second and third one out, unable to bring anybody across. So Edison Valerio will lead things off for Spain here in the bottom of three and his first pitch, or Justin Rasmus' first pitch rather, is away to him. It's a ball and no strikes. Valerio in his first trip to the plate became the first strikeout victim of the day for Justin Erasmus. Count even on him at one and one. It'll be him, then Jesus Ustaris who walked in the first inning, and Chris Kweitzer who grounded out. Ryan, right now, how important is a clean inning for Justin Erasmus? I know we're only, you know, in the, the early stages of this game, still in bottom three but to be somebody who has already seen 11 hitters and had to deal with you know runners in scoring position essentially throughout how important is it to get quickly through this inning up over 40 pitches now yeah it's a momentum killer you know both teams have been on the ropes we've seen obviously spain even last time out you got your boys doing some things offensively finally getting in a groove so you want to get some quick outs get some good counts and get your team back into it Valerio gone for a leadoff out here, and that brings up Ustari as the first baseman. Jesus, you know, we talked about the, the nice job during that last half inning by Edison Valerio to make that play on the in-between hop, but not only that, for Ustari's to make that pick on the sacrifice yeah. bunt on a tough throw over to first, you don't do that. This is a, a differently built game here as we go into the bottom of the third inning if that ball gets away and a run scores. Yeah, it's amazing, you know, when you go back and, and just, you know, this brings back so many memories for me, obviously from being, you know, where you have to qualify for the World Baseball Classic, playing in the World Baseball Classic. And you think about some of the plays and you cling to some of those plays you just talked about, you know, the, the picking the ball at first. And you think to yourself, look, third inning, no big deal. He right. picks it. It'll, but that those are, again, we talked about runs coming at a premium right now. Both teams trying to get to game speed, getting that rhythm. These runs are going to be huge early on. So you'll go, you'll go back from two weeks from now, even if you get through this uh, that, and you get to march in the WBC and you think about some of those plays. Nice pick on the backhand by Tyler Smith, but the airmailed throw not in time to get Usari. So Jesus aboard with a one-out single. That thing very nearly got into the dugout, which would have been an error charge to Smith and an extra base for Ustari's, but it'll keep him at first on the single to the left side. Hustling down the line right here, but look, Exhibit A, plays like this, you have to play clean defense. Your boy on the man, Justin Erasmus, doing a great job keeping these Spain hitters at bay. 46 pitches in. Don't need to give them extra outs. Chris quits her into the batter's box, a product of Buffalo University of, uh, or the State University of New York at Buffalo, I should say. And uh, a guy who can play a bunch of different spots, and that's important in tournament play as well. He can play the corner infield spots and in the outfield, and not gonna matter. That one out single in this inning as the bouncer off the back of the mound finds the glove of Smith and a 6-3 double play retires Spain in the third. We're headed to the fourth.
environment is so festive. The fans here are enjoying what they're seeing at this time. Marching to the World Baseball Classic. Headed to the middle third of this ball game, still scoreless. South Africa and Spain trading zeros in innings one through three and back at Armand Wolf Arena in Regensburg. My name is Tyler Mon, alongside Ryan Roland Smith, the return of the World Baseball Classic for the first time in five and a half years. WBC play is back and we are so thrilled to be part of it, not just here in Germany, but coming up in a couple of weeks at Rod Carew Stadium in Panama, you saw uh, the shot of that gorgeous ballpark, which they're they're finishing up some renovation work to Estadio Rod Carew and getting that set for another six team pool, which will send two more teams on to the 2023 WBC as it'll be three, four and five for South Africa here in the top of the fourth inning with neither side giving an inch so far. It's a one ball, one strike count on Kyle Botha, the catcher in this South Africa order. Little Two Princes by Spin Doctor. Is that your jam? Do you request that? I love that album. It's it, Look, put it this way. I'm trapped in the 90s Same. when it comes to music. I, I hope you are too. Yeah, I, I think it's one of these things where I, I do have to, I'm going to claim this right now, 90s, best decade when it comes to music. I'm with you. I like and if it. you disagree, you can hit us up on social media, <laughs> whatever. I don't care. You can especially hit up Ryan at hyphen 18. <laughs> You can't debate that. Listen to the Spin Doctors in the background. Love spin it. Spin Doctors, man. One of my favorite. That was like a... Like a... At the two qualifying groups for here in Germany and Panama. Six teams each. Four will advance from those total 12 onto the 2023 WBC. Phoenix, Miami, Taichung, Tokyo for the opening round of the 2023 main edition of the tournament. Two balls and two strikes. You and I have been uh, involved in the WBC in very different ways. I, uh, an international baseball nerd and a slovenly non-athletic goober, uh, have only uh, <laughs> been there as a fan. But I've been everyone so far uh, as a fan. And, uh, and you have taken part not only uh, in the main tournament, but also in the qualifiers. And just to see this event back yeah. means so much for the international baseball community because, you know, five and a half years is a long time to wait between events on the international baseball calendar. But especially in something that we've discussed, for guys on a lot of these rosters, this is the pinnacle of where they want to be in their careers right now. Playing for a national team on this stage in ballparks like this against really good competition, this is something that international baseball has been so thirsty to have come back and it's finally here well you nailed it too i mean uh, you got to put this into perspective first of all yes when you see that world baseball classic logo you know from the first time i saw it in 2006 i remember i was an a-ball kid i was injured for that but i was still with the team in florida i never forget we had our workout and we had a lot of young players a lot of young professional players and guys who had that chance to play professionally it didn't work out they're back in australia and then all of a sudden you, you see the dominican republic you know, David Ortiz yep. walking on the field. And you're like, hold on a second. In a few days, I'm going to go up against that guy? It's amazing. And you mentioned it too, just to have that experience, that opportunity. You may never get to the big leagues uh, if you're in this situation or if you're a guy who, you know, sort of get to the tail end of their career. But you'll never forget being 60 feet away from the world's best players. And you have that chance, and that's what's at stake for these guys right now, to get that chance to go in March in one of those pools and be against the world's best. There is something about that logo too. There, it's it's gorgeous. The WBC mark, the original WBC mark, a Todd Radom design, as a swing and a miss there by Kyle Botha will put him down for out number one. The updated mark here for 2022 and 23, I think, is gorgeous. You see it in the top left corner of your screen on our score bug. Uh, just the, you know, I remember the the first time ever seeing uh, an Olympic baseball game, you know, back when I was little. And of course, we've got a, a team on the field that played host to the first ever full-fledged metal version of baseball in the Olympics for the Barcelona games in 1992 in Spain. But seeing, you know, the blue outline with World Baseball Classic painted around it, that's, you know, derived from the international game. I remember seeing that at the Olympics when I was a kid. And there is just something that 
presents a mystique with the international game yeah. in any sport, but in baseball as well, that feels so different. You mentioned the Olympics, Doug. So you know, playing in the Olympics in you know, 2004, the question was always, how do you get, because again, we all know major league players can't play in the Olympics. Right. The time of year and, and for whatever, obviously the organization is not going to let these players go. So what do you come up with to get the best players from Team USA, the best players from the Dominican Republic, the best players from Cuba, you know, guys we've never seen before. All, all of a sudden, Aroldis Chapman rolls on the scene in 2009. No one's ever seen him pumping 102. Uh, and this from the left side. From the left side, exactly. And obviously now, you know, one of the game's greats. But you ha all of a sudden you come up with this this format, and the and it's growing too amongst major league players. Some of the best players in the world. We've seen Team USA grow and grow. You know, Mike Trout's already signed up for March, the best player in the game. Bryce Harper, Nolan Arenado, Trevor Story, uh, Pete Alonso is going to be on that team. Right. Uh, JT Real Muto. I mean, yeah, the, the names that have already committed for next year are stunning. Yeah, and I think, too, and, you know, we, we, I actually ran into Adam Jones right before this game, and, you know, we all remember the big catch he made playing for Team USA, that last World Baseball Classic. And just the pride, when you talk to anyone, doesn't matter what country you're from, whether you're from South Africa and, like we talked about, you've just had that small, you know, professional experience, or you have a 20-year major leaguer, Ken Griffey Jr. being the hitting coach. It means something to have that country across your chest. You know, I'll, I'll relate it. The Adam Jones moment, I'll relate to something for our fans watching in the U.S. The Adam Jones moment is the moment that legitimized this event in the minds of a lot of American sports fans. And it, to me, reminds me of Super Bowl three. Joe Namath guaranteeing victory over the Baltimore course Colts for the New York Jets. The, the Super Bowl the first couple years, yeah, it's, you know, these two leagues, and one of them's been around for a long time. The other one's an upstart league. What does this really mean? But you have that signature defining moment, and then all of a sudden it becomes the biggest event on the sports stage in America. The WBC needed a signature moment, and there had been some really cool moments in the WBC, but for American fans, Adam Jones, a San Diego kid, as a ball crushed in the air to left, Lester Galvan, started back on it, actually comes in. The rain has started to fall here in Regensburg, so we'll see how that sort of affects uh, the playing conditions here as the afternoon goes along. But, you know, you've got a local guy robbing a home run with one of the most spectacular catches you'll ever see in a baseball game. Not only that, but doing it from a guy who is now a current Padre, in, in Manny Machado, who hit it, it's at a crucial time in the game. You know, you've got Tyler Clippard's reaction, yelling out, oh, my God, on the mound. Uh, the call from Matt Vaskersian, which was incredible. The thing about that play that I remember most, if I could hand uh, an award to a camera operator, <laughs> yeah. the high home camera on that, if you go back and watch Adam Jones's catch, the way that ball is tracked and zooming in, following the ball the entire time to when Adam Jones skies and makes that catch is the single most incredible work of baseball camera work that I think I've ever seen. Everything about that moment was perfect. And you can tell what it means to Adam Jones. He's in Regensburg right now watching the qualifiers. Absolutely. I mean, five years after making that play, this event still has that special place in his heart. Well, if that camera operator is watching right now, he's pretty jazzed that he he's got a like, big mention. Man, seven thirty, eight o'clock in the morning. Am I already <laughs> kicking off on this note? That's fantastic. <laughs> and today. By, by the way, that was March too. Remember, yeah. like it's, that's up mid-season down there at Petco Park, where he's operating that camera all year long. So, yeah, good call right there for sure. Count now, ball and a strike on the right-handed hitting left fielder Tyrone Milne. You can see these at bats are getting much better from the South African team. Make Medrano work. You're seeing a lot more off-speed pitches as that rain falls. This has been something we've talked about a bunch leading into this. Is the rain going to be a factor? So I forget to, you want to sneak that run in because the game does become official after five. Maybe sneak a run in before they have to call it. Yeah, I posted a picture on social media yesterday, had a jacket on. I had a friend respond, is it really cold enough for that jacket? It is chilly here. <laughs> it is currently 57 degrees Fahrenheit. It's just under 14 degrees Celsius. Another foul ball. So it is uh, a lot more of a September, October feeling game uh, than maybe where, you know, a lot of pro ball is going on right now. It does not feel like a, a summer afternoon here in Regensburg. We're hoping to get a little bit of break uh, in the weather over the coming days. But it is something that will play a factor as this week goes along. You see Nelson Prado, the manager of the Spain team on the right of your screen there. He's trying to get Ronald Madrano through another inning as he comes up on 70 pitches. He's at 
number 67 with his next one. Chris Byers on the one out walk, digging in over at first. That breaking pitch in tight. And you can see Medrano, he kind of motioned over to the dugout. Yeah, yeah, I was just about to say, you can see him stepping off, starting to stall. His rhythm starting to get broken a little bit, trying to clean those spikes out. You can see the feel of the pitch too, that breaking ball slipping. Yeah. That's another factor as well. Have to take advantage of that right now. If you're the South African team, better at bats, make him throw strikes. Milne waiting, 2-2. Two -two. Up the middle, that'll scoot through into center field, and it's first and second with two gone. And again, South Africa starting to create some traffic. Keep Medrano out there as long as you can in this rain. Make sure these at-bats are good. This is a changeup right here. It sinks down below the strikes and able to get good two-strike hitting in right there. More of a protective swing, emergency swing, but hey, that works. One thing we can say about the rain, and you and I are not meteorologists and we're not Murray Cook, but it does seem like a light enough rain, and we were talking about this yesterday during workouts, that for a while you could play through a rain like this. Now, knock wood, it doesn't get any heavier, but that's at least kind of the nice thing of how the weather system has been over the last couple of days here in Regensburg. It hasn't been torrential downpours, but it is a factor right now as it comes down with Benji Smith trying to get his team in the lead in the first pitch. Therefore, a strike to him, it's 0-1. Yeah, they are going to push these games through the rain a little bit. They have to because you just don't have the windows. You've flown in six different countries around the world in a small window. So it's important you have to play through some of this, some of these, uh, fact, these, this rain right here. In tight on 0-1. This is a big spot. South Africa saw its first six hitters retired in the first and second. Then last inning got a leadoff double from Benji Smith, who's at the plate right now, went to right center with it. Jason Carelsa walked to follow. And Victor and Gope bunted those guys to second and third. So they were both in scoring position with one out, but then a ground out by Jonathan Phillips, a ground out by Tyler Smith. Those two left on. Now you've got first and second, two out. And a big opportunity here for a guy who came up with your first extra base hit of the tournament last inning. But a 1-1 tapper back to the mound. Medrano's got it, and that ooh, retires the side in the fourth as Medrano and Ustari share a laugh over at first. Going to the bottom of the fourth inning, still scoreless in Regensburg. In 1895, American gold miners arrived in the Transvaal province in South Africa, and they brought the game of baseball with them. And over a century of baseball history since has produced the guys that you see on the field today for South Africa. Olympic participants in 2000 near your hometown in Australia at the Sydney Games. They went one and six in that preliminary round. Played in the first two WBCs in 06 and 09. They have not made it out of qualifiers in the most recent two editions of the World Baseball Classic, but here, 
locked in a real good one as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning in Regensburg, Germany. Back inside our broadcast booth here uh, atop the plate area at Armin Wolf Arena. There are not many better broadcast positions for two baseball broadcasters in the world. I mean, we are in a, in a fairly new building that they built behind the plate, but we kind of hang out over the walkway behind the seating section. We're like right on top of the plate. This is amazing uh, for a vantage point. It's a great spot for sure. You see that 2006, 2009 WBCs for South Africa? Justin Connell to left and way out of here. Connell ambushes a fastball and gives us the first run of the 2022 WBC qualifiers and Spain is on top here in the fourth. And Justin Connell breaks this score lock right here with a big blast. You mentioned it getting out on that fastball, that pitch kind of stayed out in the strike zone. Getting a good pitch to hit and crushed. The Barcelona-born Washington Nationals prospect comes through and a 1-0 lead in the bottom of the fourth. And that'll bring up Lester Galvan. See this fastball in the middle of the plate. Little cut fastball, actually. Get those hands extended. He knew right away, too. Yeah, Spain's dugout did, too. They exploded when that thing came off the bat, and that was a no-doubter for the Florida high school product. First pitch breaking ball up and in on Galvan, and it is 1-0. And, oh. and he kind of wondered if this was going to be the case. There is some activity now with guys stirring and headed down the line toward the South Africa bullpen. South Africa getting some really good work out of Justin Erasmus to start this game. Bouncer over to third, and Jonathan Phillips will get the out. So Erasmus bouncing back immediately. First out recorded here in the fourth, and sends it to Gabrielino, the catcher. But especially with such, such a short format, one thing that we heard yesterday from Andrew Berglund is we're going to rely heavily on relievers because multiple times going through the lineup in a short tournament format like this, you want to be able to get guys out there, speed bats up, slow bats down, give different looks, and just try to confuse opposing lineups as much as possible. For sure. And, and let's not forget, there's not a big scouting report on Justin Erasmus if you're the Spain team. So right. you've already seen him. You've gone through the lineup a couple times. You've had those conversations. You walk back in the dugout and say, hey, look, I've seen the cut fastball. I've seen that sinker. Shallow, shallow left. Tyler Smith going out will make the catch. Two gone. But you get that feel right away. So you do have to mix and match and give different looks from guys that the Spain, yeah, if you're a team Spain, you haven't seen, or if you're team South Africa. But just back to those those qualifiers. You mentioned those six, 2009. Justin Erasmus tells a story. He was pitching in Mexico against the, the team Mexico down there. 35,000 fans. He said it was the most exhilarating experience he's ever had on a baseball field. I mean, could you imagine a situation you've played, you haven't played, at that point, you haven't played above a ball. You know, so you may have played in front of a few fans, maybe a big fireworks night on, on yeah. Friday. Yeah, yeah. Nothing like Nothing that. Nothing like that. With the set, the drums and the, you know, the chants and everything, uh, it's it's unreal. That's the thing about the WBC too, man. I mean, the the way that fans across the globe interact with a baseball game is one of my favorite things about this event. It's one of my favorite things about, you know, just watching baseball games from whether it's Latin America or Asia or games in Europe. The the embrace of the sport is so different in every region. And, you know, for guys, Justin Erasmus grows up and, and plays in the minors, and then you go to a stadium of 35,000 people anywhere, it's going to be incredible. But like you said, they've got the drums, they've got the chants, they've got songs. Uh, the in-stadium atmosphere is totally different with music and sound effects and all that. Uh, it is just it is an incredible experience, and especially for the athletes who get to be the centerpiece of it. Yeah, and, and if you're a fan, obviously you mentioned all that, but you're watching your country yeah. on your home soil. It just means so much more. Two Do balls and two strikes on Oscar Angulo. Yeah, we were in Japan doing the Olympic qualifiers of Premier 12 in 2019. And, yeah, talking to some of the guys from Team USA, some of the guys who had some big league time, and they yeah. said they have never experienced anything like they had in that in Tokyo, inside that Tokyo Dome. 3-2 on the way from Erasmus is high for ball four, and he puts Angulo on with two outs. You and I had a day in Tokyo. We did the day game together for Premier 12, which served as uh, an Olympic qualifying event 
for the, the Tokyo Games in what was originally scheduled to be 2020, and then we all know where we were. Uh, but we got a chance. We did an afternoon game, and for the night game, Japan was playing in the night game, and we just went and yeah. hung out in the stands in right field. And it was, I mean, the second that crowd came alive for the bottom of the first inning was unlike anything I've ever seen in my life. It was unreal. I mean... Bouncing ball out towards short. Tyler Smith's got it, and that will retire the side. We'll continue that conversation on the other side. But Justin Connell's leadoff homer gets Spain out in front, and we are headed to the fifth, the one nothing lead for Spain. Scoreless game through three and a half innings no longer after Justin Connell, the right fielder for Spain, blasted this offering from Justin Erasmus out to left field. And as you could tell, uh, he knew it pretty quickly. That thing got out of here in a hurry, a really impressive way to get the offense started on this Friday afternoon. That ball was crushed, our first home run of these qualifiers. You can see how fired up he was to break this tie. You're trying to figure out a way to just get going offensively. Now all of a sudden you can take a breath, settle in, and get moving. So we head to the top half of the fifth. It'll be eight, nine, and one for South Africa with Jason Carelsa leading off. Jason will be followed by Victor Ngope and then Jonathan Phillips. And you know, your Spain, obviously you feel great now you've got the lead. South Africa on the other side, it's really, really good work by Justin Erasmus to bounce back. He didn't allow anything else outside of the two out walk in that inning as the throw momentarily pulls Ustari's off the bag, but Carelso retired. So you keep the damage to one run. You still feel good about where yeah. you are right now. Yeah, it's so. I mean, obviously you need a run to score, right? But it's still reachable. If all of a sudden you put up a three spot in that situation, you obviously the wind's out of your sails. If you're Justin Erasmus, you're feeling pretty good about what you're doing against this tough Spain lineup, this offensive lineup. And all of a sudden you can keep him at one run. You can manufacture that run. But I will say time is running out because... As soon as Medrano's up, you are going to get the back end of that bullpen from Spain. First pitch fastball there to Victor Ngope. Victor had the successful sacrifice bunt in the third inning, but South Africa left two aboard in scoring position. Pretty good contingent of South Africa fans on the third base side as Victor fouls it back to the screen. And it's cool, we were talking earlier, one of the things I love most about these events is when the other teams show up to watch games. And we saw uh, the Czech Republic guys walking around. Uh, France's national team, there's some representatives here. Uh, they'll play in the night game tonight coming up at seven o'clock against Great Britain. Germany's guys were here saying hello and greeting fans as they'll play in front of a home crowd tomorrow. And Gope serves one to center. Two gone. But I, I love that. I, I love it, too. I think, too, you've got to remember, I mean, you're just trying to get a glance of what you're up against. Right. So you've never faced these teams in your life from all over, the, all over the planet. And so you're just trying to get some sort of look or some sort of feel about what you're going to be up against these next couple of days. So two gone. We'll go back to the top of the order in Jonathan Phillips. Ronald Medrano has been really, really impressive. He worked around trouble in the third and fourth. But... 
outside of the two hits he's allowed. He has been really good. A couple of walks, but some otherwise weak contact. And now kind of messing with the, the timing and trying to throw off these South Africa hitters a little bit. Doing the Nesta Cortez. Seems has found its way around the globe. Oh, one. Some Johnny Cueto in there, too. I was going to say, why doesn't Johnny Cueto get more credit? He, yeah, I feel like he was sort of the pioneer in the weird, freaky. Because it's it's 2022. It's nasty Nestor. That's what right, I'm telling right, you right now. He's right. having a great year, just a breakout season for the New York Yankees, <laughs> doing his viral social media pitching mechanics. You can see it all over the place. 1-1 one, one there for a strike. It's 1-2. and two. Phenomenal facial hair, too. For sure. Oh, absolutely. He's limited to the, the mustache. There's only so much you can do as he That's right. But he, he rocks it. Ball and two strikes as Medrano from that first base side of the rubber comes home to Phillips and a grounder out towards second. Quick and quiet top of the fifth for South Africa. Three up, three down. It'll send us to the bottom of five. Spain on the home run by Justin Connell out in front, one nothing. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of World Baseball Classic Incorporated and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Back in beautiful Regensburg in the Bavaria region of Germany, my name is Tyler Ron alongside Ryan Roland Smith as we head into the bottom of the fifth inning. Noel V. Marte will lead things off for Spain, which now leads this thing 1-0 over South Africa in game one of the 2022 World Baseball Classic qualifier. A day in which the rain started a little while ago. It has lightened somewhat, still raining a bit. But Justin Rasmus out for his fifth inning of work as we see some stirring in the South Africa bullpen down the left field line. They've still got the tarps on the pitcher's mound, but a couple of guys stretching down there. His first pitch is up high for ball one to Noel V. Marte. He really just does have the, the batter's box presence yeah. of a dude. Big I mean, time. when he steps in, he's got that big frame, as he'll take that one for ball two. And you can see exactly what we heard yesterday from Nelson Prada about, you know, the, the maturity, the ability to handle himself at just 20 years old. He won't turn 21 for another three weeks or so. He's been impressive so far, even though he's 0 for 2 at this point. Yeah, you mentioned that 0 for 2. couple lazy fly balls in the infield. You know that's not going to last, too. That's just a timing issue, trying to get on track. Maybe a little slower velocity he's not used to seeing. But, man, over the course of these qualifiers, that's not going to keep up at all. 3-0 is ball four. So Marte takes a four-pitch walk to get things started. You know, the other thing in a, a situation like Noel V. Marte's this year, he's had a lot thrown at him in 2022. We talked about the draft. But in addition to the draft, or the, the trade, rather, in addition to that, you know, he's played at the high A level, but in two different leagues. So he's had to get adjusted to things there. Uh, and on top of all of that, you come over to uh, a spot where, you know, you're playing for a team that you don't necessarily know a ton of guys on. 
and you've been playing all season long, and now you're playing for the first time in almost 10 days. His last minor league game was September 7th for High A Dayton at home against Lan or on the road against Lansing. So it's been a little while, and you don't see layoffs like that generally in during the, the baseball season. No, you don't. And, and on top of that, too, you have some expectations as well. Like Everyone knows who you are. You're a top 20 prospect in Major League Baseball, not for your organization. And all of a sudden, you come to this, this Spain team, and guys from all over the world, a lot of guys from Venezuela, with that Spanish heritage, a couple guys from Nicaragua, a couple guys from the U.S. But all of a sudden, you're, 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 you're you know, a young, you're barely 20 years old, and you're in this situation where you have to kind of carry this team because of who you are. Talking with Nelson Prada, the manager of the Spain team yesterday, and he did say that. He said, you know, it really seems to be something that will benefit Noel V. Marte being around big leaguers and guys with experience. Because he said he wants to perform, he wants to do good, and that this is a different style of. He said it's not a different game, but it's a different style of game. The the type of pitching, the sequencing, the approach that you're going to see, and of course, as we've talked about so much, the velocity and the quality of pitches is just different than what he's going to see throughout the rest of his career. Is a bouncing ball to third, started by Jonathan Phillips for a 5-4-3 double play, a big twin killing. Justin Erasmus has bounced back really well to the last base traffic that he's seen, and he clears the bases with two gone now. Man, that is a huge, huge double play. You've got the middle of the lineup up right now. You're in a situation where time is running out. You have to keep this at one nothing. You have to keep this in striking distance if you're the South African team. So getting a huge double play, keeping that pitch count too. You do not want to get to that 85 pitches if you're Justin Erasmus. So Jesus Ustari is now in with two gone and the base is empty and a big cut and miss on that breaking ball. It's 0-1. This has the feel. If Justin Rasmus can get this out, this has the feel where you get in the dugout and the guys who are coming to the plate say, we got to get this dude some support because he's throwing his heart out for us right now and we need to back this up. For sure. And we talked about some of the at-bats. And look, South Africa had a huge chance in the third inning. You don't want that to be your only chance. And you've got to remember as well, you're going to see that bullpen here in a second. That's going to be the back end. You're going to see some velocity. You're not used to seeing that. We've talked about that. So you, the, the, the time is running out, especially Madrona. You've seen him a couple times now. You're starting to get to him a little bit. That's a big moment. You, <laughs> but you can't force the issue. Have to have those good long at-bats. 1-1 one, one down, 2-1. Two and one. By the way, we did get a message from our buddy J.P. Morosi, who is tuned in this morning with his four-year-old daughter, Lulu, before taking his girls to school. <laughs> He's just the best man. If this game started at 3.30 in the morning, he would have been awake. He would have been all over so, it. All over it. The greatest. I don't know when he sleeps, <laughs> but he's the greatest. 2-1 is high. Three balls and a strike. JP, I'll give you my address to send you and send me the check <laughs> for that. No, I mean, he re there is no bigger champion of international baseball in this event specifically than JP Morosi. And we got to work with him for the Olympic qualifiers and Premier 12 back in 2019 and just the pros pro. And these types of games showcase why, because this is great quality baseball that's being played between, you know, two countries. You and I will go home and we'll tell people what we did and they'll say, oh, I didn't realize that they played baseball in Spain or in South Africa. And yeah, they do. And they play it really well. Yeah, he's a big ambassador about growing the game all over the world. And you mentioned too, you know, watching JP Morosi just interact, speak in different languages to some of these different rosters, knowing everyone's backstory. As we see the pitching coach right now make a his walk. Eric Threets, who is a, a guy who I know you have come across mm -hmm. in your baseball life and was kind of a late addition to this coaching staff for Andrew Berglund. Andrew Berglund had uh, another uh, pitching coach lined up and some things fell through. He wasn't able to make it. And Eric Threets, uh, a very high recommendation uh, that put him on the radar for, for this South Africa squad. And I mean, this is the first time we've seen him have to go out and visit Justin Erasmus today. Yeah, which is a good sign. And Eric Threets pitching the big leagues for the Giants, for the White Sox. Left-handed pitcher, plenty of wisdom. You hear about these coaches, though, and even the, the manager, Andrew Berglund, getting down to South Africa and helping out. And This is a big part. We talked about this in the open with the, the pitcher use limitations. Now, you go over 30 pitches, guess what? you got a day off, no big deal. You can bounce right back. You go over 50, all of a sudden, now you're looking at four days off. So they can use 
uh, Erasmus in the final game of this qualifier. So you do want to keep him. Look, he's proven, he's kind of auditioned that he could be a guy on that last day yeah. if they do get there. But we saw on that graphic too. You go over 85, you are done. May as well, may as well get your pom-poms out and sit on the top step of that dugout because you are done for this tournament. You know, the other thing that's interesting too is if you are the Czech Republic or Germany, your game one starter, they go over 50 pitches, potentially you don't see them again. And yeah. so to structure your pitching staff, because that four-day rest period would take us through Wednesday, which is when the, the final game uh, will take part. Now, granted, the final game is between the two teams who will advance regardless. But, you know, if you've got your best guy going in game number one, but you're not playing until the second day of the qualifier, it changes the complexion of your staff going forward. Yeah, good chance tomorrow you're going to see guys going sub-50 to, to keep those arms for sure. They are restrictive, though. I was surprised when I saw that. I'm like, man, they, this is... This is making you use that bullpen a ton. And actually, I take that back. The final game, the winner of that final game will move on. So that's still obviously a, a big piece of this puzzle. Uh, but it just changes the way you structure your staff for whether you're playing in you know game seven or game eight on Tuesday versus the game nine matchup on Wednesday. Two and one. Rasmus kicks and deals from the stretch and a big swing and miss there. That's a good pitch right there. You see him slip behind the count, 2-1. Able to throw that change up in the strike zone. Get a big swing and miss, getting back in this count. Right here, right here. Chris the DH. Ground out in the first, grounded into a double play in the third, trying to come through here on a two-ball, two-strike, two-out situation in the fifth. Three and two. This will be the final pitches for Justin Erasmus Day. Five strong innings, giving up the one run. Bullpen's cranking down there for South Africa. In the on-deck circle, Justin Connell, who's produced this game's only run with his leadoff homer last inning. Rasmus trying to get his guys to the bat rack, trailing this thing by just one. Right-hander kicks and comes home on 3-2, and a shallow fly towards center in a few steps, an easy play for Benji Smith, and a terrific day in the books for Justin Erasmus. We are headed to the sixth, the 1-0 Spain lead. to the top half of the sixth inning of a 1-0 lead for Spain as we see some more rules and regulations for this 2022 WBC qualifying round. Video review is in play here, as is the designated hitter, but two rules that have come across in Major League Baseball, of course, in recent years, a three batter minimum for relief pitchers and the mound visit limitation, those not part of this WBC qualifier here in 2022. So some things to keep in mind as we move on over the next five days. New arm into the game for Spain as we head into the top half of the sixth inning is the right-hander Daniel Alvarez who will take over on the mound after a terrific day. Five shutout innings from Ronald Medrano. And the big, big right-hander Daniel Alvarez from Baquisimeto, Venezuela does have that Spanish heritage. 
Good fastball. Good slider. Again, this is that back end of that bullpen from Spain. This is why that, that clock kind of starts to tick a little bit if you're South Africa. Dwindling chances because the pitching is just going to get tougher. Final line on the day today for Medrano. Five innings for him. Two hits, no runs across. He walked a pair, struck out four. Really, really good work of his 79 pitches, 53 for strikes. And the first pitch running up for that bunt offering was Tyler Smith. Out of the two spot in the order. 0 for 2 so far today. And bounces the second offering he sees from Medrano out to second. Easy play there for Angulo. One up, one down in the sixth. Medrano was outstanding today. He was on the ropes a little bit. South Africa had that chance in the third inning. But that's really it. You could see him, too, start to go to those secondary pitches as the lineup kept turning over. Daniel Alvarez played a whole lot of pro ball in the New York Yankees organization primarily from 2014 through 2019. He reached AAA with the scranton Wilkesbury Rail Riders in the International League for just one appearance in 2019, but otherwise spent the bulk of his career at AA and what was then known as Class A Advanced and Low A as a flare out into right. He's going to get down for a base hit. So Kyle both has got his first hit of the 2022 WBC qualifier and the potential tying run is aboard for South Africa with one out in the sixth. Most recently in pro ball, Daniel Alvarez was a member of the San Francisco Giants organization with the AAA Sacramento River Cats and what was known for just one season as AAA West the Pacific Coast League now, but not great numbers. 11 games last year, all in relief. He gave up 14 runs on 17 hits over 18 innings. So a guy who's, you know, kind of trying to find his way back. Alvarez, just 26 years old. Now squares off with Christian Byers, the designated hitter. First pitch there for a strike, it's 0-1. Byers walked in the fourth inning with one out. He was left aboard at second base. South Africa stranded four on the base pass between the third and fourth. Went down in order in the fifth. Here they are in the sixth with a one out base runner at first. Big cut and miss. Byers seemed like he was geared up for something and then got that breaker on the inner half. Fastball on the inner half. Seemed like he was geared up for a breaking ball. Well, it's got that movement too. Talked about the velocities, low 90s right now, but has that good sinking, that sinking movement to it as well, which is tough. Ball in two strikes. Cape Town product buyers trying to move the Johannesburg product Botha along from first. One, two in the air to right. It sends Connell back and leaping. He's able to make the grab and nearly dropped it on the transfer. But man, Justin Connell, that's a second ball to right that I think he just hasn't had a real good look at coming off the bat. Yeah, he's uh, had some interesting reads and some. Um Routes right there to the ball, but you could hear the South African dugout too. I could hear it even through my headphones on the field mic right now, just praying that ball was getting over his head right there. There's a situation you see a guy come in and you're just kind of praying that you get that break. That's what it's going to take right now. Get that one big stolen bag and a base hit, whatever it takes just to get back into this game tied up. One other rule change that is currently in use in the minor leagues and moving up the chain to the big leagues is the bigger bases and that is not in play here with the WBC but man over the last couple of years the stolen base numbers in major league baseball and minor league baseball rather have just skyrocketed with those bigger bases and it's interesting to see that start to come back into play in baseball so much 
you know, with the artistry of stolen bases has been lost in recent years and decades, it's really cool to see the way players have started stealing bags again. And, you know, as that moves up into the big leagues, presumably we'll see that down the road in the WBC too, as the 0-2 is on the outside corner for a called strike three. Josh Hendricks has gone on strikes, and South Africa leaves another, their fifth stranded base runner of the day, as Alvarez is able to rebound from the one-out single to keep this game a one nothing lead. We're headed to the bottom of the six, Spain in front. Well, late in the 19th century, Spain banned baseball to try to curb revolutionary activities in Cuba and instead help people fall further in love with baseball. 1927, the first official team was formed by the 1940s. The Spanish Baseball Federation came into existence. Spanish soccer teams created their own baseball teams that produced enough talent to win the European Baseball Championship in 1955. The 92 Olympic Games hosted in Spain in Barcelona, produced a, a victory for that nation's host squad. Didn't produce a massive influx of baseball talent. The stadium that hosted baseball was later converted into a, a soccer venue in Spain. But we have seen not only at the WBC level, but U23s, U18s, U15s, the international baseball competitions around the globe, Spain has started to, to really come into its own producing some talent. And here in the bottom of the sixth inning of the first game of this 2022 WBC qualifier, they've got the lead over South Africa. And the man who put them in the lead is the one at the plate to get things started here in the bottom of the sixth. Right fielder, the Barcelona-born Justin Connell, who belted a no-doubt home run to kick things off in the sixth inning. That's the only run we've got in this game. Tyler Monrein, Roland Smith, headed through the first day of this 2022 WBC qualifier, and this is a really good one to get us started, a one nothing game here in the sixth. Yeah, it really is. You see Jared Alario taking over for Justin Erasmus. Five solid innings, only giving up the run to this man right here. Connell, that blast to the left field. Man, they are right in this game, South Africa. Swinging another shot to left, and Connell Seeing things well now out of the five spot in the order. Check that out of the sixth spot in the order. And he's got himself his second hit and a leadoff single in the sixth. Final line in this game for Justin Erasmus, who pitched his heart out. Five innings, six hits, the one run on the homer, four walks, one strikeout, but he was able to limit damage. He finishes this game at 78 pitches, 43 for strikes. And is available to come back that last day. Didn't go over the 85 threshold. If he goes over that, he's done. He looked good, though. Made pitches when he had to. Slipped behind the count. Was able to make big pitches when he was in those 2-1 counts. Bunt down. Going to be a tough play, third base side, and no play as beating it out at first, Lester Galvan puts himself aboard, and it's first and second now with nobody out for Spain in the bottom of the sixth, trying to add to a one-run lead. And this is where international baseball differs from what we're used to seeing in the U.S. with 162 games. He's just trying to get that insurance run. And all of a sudden, now you're later on this game, 
get that second run knowing South Africa struggled to get anything going. Now we go to the eighth spot in the order, and the catcher, Gabriel Lino. This is a big, big spot for this Spain team with a 1-0 lead on just the solo homer. One run on eight hits now for Spain. Trying to improve that ratio here in the sixth as Lino trying to put runners at second and third with one out, which is the best use of the sacrifice bunt. It's one of the very few cases in which mathematically it's shown that that actually increases your chances of scoring a run in an inning. It's not a massive increase, but it does increase your chances of scoring a run if you go from first and second nobody out to second and third one out. Not only that too, Tyler, it just puts pressure on the defense as well. You have to align your defense a little bit differently. You have to play those corners in a little bit more once you have those runners in scoring position. But like you said too, just a, it gives you that opportunity of base hit scores two runs and get that insurance run over as well. Lino squares and the runner moving off from second is going to make it into third regardless. Justin Connell got the jump a little bit too quickly and the throw going in behind him got away from Ngope and it's first and third now with nobody out. And a big break for Spain. They had Justin Connell dead to rights right here getting that extra step against uh, with the bunt in play. And again, game just speeding up on you a little bit. Not making a good throw into second base. That's kind of one of those step off and run at the runner situations. And instead, Jared Alario just trying to hustle it to an infielder to get Connell hung up between second and third. And instead, he never broke stride as a swing and a miss there. Well, when you turn the throw, you kind of anticipate that he's going to be breaking back to the right. bag. All of a sudden, you, your eyes light up. It kind of shocks you a little bit. And then you try and rush the throw, and that's exactly what happened. No balls and two strikes on Gabriel Lino. And a grounder out towards second. That'll add to the lead, but it could be two. 6-4-3. It retires Galvan moving from first to second and Lino, but it is a run-scoring grounder. And with the bases cleared, Spain adds on. It's 2 to nothing. And a two-run lead right now feels like a 10-run lead if you're South Africa when you're struggling so much to get some action, some traffic on the bases. Has been a whole lot doing since that third inning. Big run right there for Spain. Yeah, Gabriel Lino, probably not the way he wanted to come through, but you're happy to get the run across in any way. The base is empty now for Oscar Angulo out of the nine spot. <laughs> and again, a big difference. You're, you're in the midst of 162 game stays. You got kind of frustrated. You're roll, gr you know, grounded to a double play. But in these situations, it's high fives all around because yep. you're just getting that run over, getting that W. Foul ball, first base side. Lino coming off of a pretty cool last month. He actually won an Italian Baseball League championship with San Marino. He was named the finals most valuable player, driving in the winning runs in the bottom of the 12th inning of game seven to beat Parma. 1-1. One, one. Foul similar spot. 1-2. One and two. Oscar Angulo likewise spent some time in the Italian Baseball League. And he'll ground this one over to third. Stabbed over there by Jonathan Phillips. The long throw is in time, and that retires the side. But the first and second nobody out situation turned into first and third, and then a run scoring double play. And as we head to the seventh, six in Regensburg.
I'm down. I'm gonna do everything here. I'm just like gonna bring like a little notepad. I'll be like one of those kids that they bring in as like a charity thing. Back inside our booth in Regensburg, talking about our post-game media availability and so pumped to be here for this 2022 World Baseball Classic qualifying round. All of these games kicking off here today, September 16th, and you can watch all 12 countries compete for free. Catch all the action live from Germany and Panama on worldbaseballclassic.com and by following at WBC Baseball on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Tyler Mon, Ryan Roland Smith, we were talking uh, post game. I was like, I'm going to be like one of those little kids that they let into the press room, like it's a charity <laughs> event. And like, what did you think about scoring that second run in the sixth inning? It's just, we're so pumped to be here. We've been talking about this event for months, and the fact that it's finally here. My excitement level has probably been annoyingly high for the last couple of days that you guys have all been around me, but man, it's just fun to be out here. Back to the hey, back to the press conference though. Yeah. Are you going to ask the hard questions? Hard hitting questions. Just like you asked Bruce Bochy yesterday. Absolutely. Wow. I mean, you, you went on another level. I mean, he was like, wow. I mean, we're talking about his ties to France. We're going to get into all that in game two of today. But you, are you going deep, Tyler? I got to say, man, it was, it was impressive. I did not ask him about his hat size, which is always the thing everybody brings up with Bruce Bochy. Now, I will say, it's my first time meeting Bruce Bochy. I did clock the size of his head. I was like, okay, it is. It's, it's a like everybody says, he wears a size eight hat. Uh, but I did not ask him about that. I was very proud of myself. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> You're close. You're getting real comfortable in that in that meeting yesterday with Bruce Bochy. Top of the seventh inning, Tyrone Milne leading things off for South Africa. It's Milne, then Benji Smith, and then Jason Karelsa. And South Africa tries to get its offense jump-started here in the top of the seventh. Two runs, eight hits, no errors to this point for Spain, which has the lead. No runs, three hits, and one error for South Africa. And the pitch there for a strike to him. Yeah, it'll be fun to talk to and about Bruce Bochy and his connections with that France squad, which will play in the night game tonight at 7 o'clock against a really talent-rich Great Britain team. They've got a lot of fascinating storylines as well, including a guy you're very familiar with in Harry Ford, the first-round pick and the top prospect in the Seattle Mariners organization who's on the Great Britain side. But, man, I said yesterday, and I, I tweeted this, we sat in a manager's office in Germany talking with Bruce Bochy about French baseball <laughs> yeah. and history and travel and just like I don't know we were sitting there having our conversation I don't know if I've ever had a cooler moment in my life yeah it's what just is this? <laughs> some of the elements you just mentioned then you just think to yourself hold on a minute what's happening right now that's like a word yeah. suit that was like a mad lib yeah <laughs> that pitch down for ball four and it's a leadoff base runner here Tyrone Milne is on to get things started in the seventh and that's what South Africa need. They just need to generate traffic, some base runners. Put this Spain team on the ropes. Get that chance to generate something here in the seventh inning. So that'll bring up Benji Smith, the center fielder, who jump-started the first offensive threat of the day for South Africa. That was back in the third inning with his leadoff double to right center. Daniel Alvarez on for his second inning of work. Puts the first pitch there for a strike. Take that strike, make him throw as many pitches, try and see as many pitches as you can in these at-bats. Weird little squib bunt in off the handle, third base side, trickles foul. The rain has stopped. It is still chilly. You can, you know, probably see fans in the background of our shots sort of bundled up in, in hats and umbrellas and all that, but it is not currently raining. So that's a good thing for the moment. I will say, though, the uh, the crepery and mandelbrennery on the first base, the smell of whatever the mandelbrennery is slinging is fan. It's like a cinnamony. I don't know if they're like roasted nuts. It smells incredible. <laughs> Am I, am I just really hungry? <laughs> What's happening right now? I was, I'm waiting for your translation as to <laughs> what we're eating. Oh, do foul the way. I've got to say, some of the food yesterday, we went pretty hardcore on the, on the German food. It was so good. It was insane. And by the way, leading into this, I was on a pretty strict diet, too. I was trying to yeah, make sure I yeah, fit into the, the WBC you know, apparel that we were given. 
right side and through for a base hit. Benji Smith, and it gets past Connell, and it's behind him. It'll send the runner, Milne, around third, where he gets the stop sign, and it's second and third with nobody out for South Africa. Man, what a break for the South Africans in this situation. First of all, the base hit, that's number one, getting some traffic on, but then all of a sudden you have Connell out there in right field. He has been a factor. He has not looked comfortable out there in right field at all. And look at this, just straight through the wickets, essentially, straight by that glove, maybe the wet, the wet ground or whatever it may be, but now you're in a good spot, two runners in scoring position with none out. You know, in Justin Connell's defense, that did look like it took a very weird last hop, and it came up off the heel of the glove and kicked off behind him. You know, it's one thing if you're coming up to play a ball and hits the heel of your glove or your arm or something and deflects close by, but that thing, that was like hitting a ramp, and it just shot off behind him, and he had to chase it down. And for a moment, I thought Milne was going to get the wave around third to try to get South Africa's first run across. But now another massive opportunity for this team. And again, we talk about all the little things that kept this to a one nothing game after the, the fourth and fifth, and now just a 2 nothing game. You're still right in it. There were chances for this thing to spin away. South Africa's kept it so tight. You're right in this game. You got this high run in scoring position. Yeah, I think for Justin Connell, I think maybe there's a little concentration lapse there as well. He's trying to play that ball to the left of him to come up throwing if there's a situation where Milne's going to round that base at second. But you mentioned it, man. It's these little things that you see in the game that in a regular season game, which Connolly's used to playing in the minor leagues, may not be a big factor. But in games like this, it could mean the entire qualification. Jason Carelsa, big opportunity for him. He walked in the third. He grounded out to lead off the fifth. And here he is with second and third and nobody out in a two-run ball game in the seventh. I think Adam Jones has got some nerves. Just spotted him on the third baseline, kind of shuffling back and forth in a tight game here in the seventh. 2017 USA Baseball WBC hero who is in attendance here in Regensburg, which is so cool I can't explain it. And it's no balls and two strikes on Carelsa. <laughs> Alvarez set. 0 2 on the way. 1 and 2. Big at bat right here. Already 0 2, or excuse me, 1 2 in this count. This is a big out for Team Spain if they can get it. And as you can see in the background of that shot of Tyrone Milne, there is a right hander working in the Spain bullpen down the right field line. Alvarez set. 1 2 coming. Got him on the swing and miss. Some tail to that pitch as it moved across the outer part of the plate and a big, big strikeout for out number one in the seventh. Man, you mentioned a big strikeout and just an absolute brick wall to your momentum if you're South Africa in this situation. You have runners on, you're making uh, the, the pitcher you're facing, you're making him work, and all of a sudden, now you, all of a sudden they got an out. You gotta make things happen here down the bottom of this lineup. Yeah, you're at the nine spot now with Victor and Gope. Victor, that sacrifice bunt in the third, he laced a line drive to center in the fifth. But Angel Beltre was right there to snare it. And, I mean, you know, as, as broadcasters and as people who love these games and what they present, the storyline of Victor and Gope being at the plate in this spot is a big one. The younger brother of the first native-born South African player to reach the big leagues, who's not here. Gift Ngope was unable to make the WBC here in 2022, and Victor's got the chance with two men in scoring position, and his team down two runs here in the seventh. Into the dirt, nice job by the veteran Lino. Let's keep that close. There's a lot of room out there. One and one. Two runs, eight hits, one error for Spain. No runs, four hits, one error for South Africa. And Gope waiting. And the 2 1 is just on the outside corner for a strike. Two and two. Tyrone Milne led off with a walk. Benji Smith singled through the right side. 
And those two moved up on the error charged to Justin Connell. Good swing right there from Victor. Have to be aggressive. He cannot, cannot strike out looking, but again, he's in the count, 2-2. Two -two. He's going to get some of these secondary pitches. Alvarez staring in to get that sign from Lino, who's keeping an eye on Ngope. Now he's got what he wants. And the 2-2 is on the way. Bouncing ball left side. This will get South Africa onto the board as Ngope drives in the first run of the WBC qualifier. He plates Milne from third. And with the tying run still in scoring position, South Africa has cut the lead in half. It's 2-1 in the seventh. And that's a really good at bat from Ngope. Nine hole hitter, all of a sudden he's, he's in a tough spot. Two strikes, you cannot strike out in that situation. You gotta put the ball in play, and like you said, two tall. And now you got the runner, the tying run is still in scoring position. And not only that, but we go back to the top of the order, and Jonathan Phillips, who's a good bat to ball guy, does have a strikeout today, but also a couple of ground outs on the infield. And a chance for one of your better hitters to come through with a potential tying run two stations away. First pitch fastball is ball one. Galvan, Beltre, and Connell, left, center, and right. one -oh fouled at the dish. Valerio and Marte at third and short. Angulo and Ustari's at second and first. Gabriel Lino behind the plate for Spain. Run across for today's home team in the bottom of the fourth, another one in the sixth. And South Africa with its first run of the qualifier. Here in the seventh and threatening for more. One, one back up the middle into center field, a base hit. In comes Beltre to field it. Around third is Smith. The throw is cut off and we're all tied up. It's 2-2 two -two in the seventh. Wow, the captain of this South African team, Jonathan Phillips, 38 years old, comes through with a big at bat, a big single back up the middle. Look at that, gets a fastball, gets his hands extended, had that big swing 1 0, stays right where he's at. Good approach right there. Man, does he come up big. The emotion from that dugout on the third base side as Spain is going to the bullpen here in the seventh. That is a fired up dugout and Jonathan Phillips pounding his chest, screaming to the guys in the third base side. And a big spot for the captain to come through and he does so to get his team level in this one for the first time as Spain goes to the bullpen for our first mid-inning pitching change. And we'll tell you about the new arm when we return. Spain led it the whole way, but here in the seventh, South Africa has broken through to tie it up.
Smith swiping second base, catching everybody off guard, and all of a sudden, the go-ahead run is in scoring position for South Africa as we move along here in the top of the seventh. Now, Jonathan Phillips able to swipe that bag. He's holding his right wrist and hopefully okay. I didn't see on the slide how awkwardly he went into the bag, but that's a big stolen base. And now a swing and a fly ball down the left field line off the bat of Tyler Smith, tracking it into foul ground. Lester Galvan is there to make the catch, and that will retire the side in the seventh. Vicente Campos, the new arm into the game, able to quell the rally for South Africa in the top of the seventh. But today's visiting team, the world's number 26, gets this thing back even. And as we head to the bottom of the seventh, our score, South Africa and Spain all tied up at two. Take a tumble down the line. We're all good. Tied up, headed to the bottom of the seventh. Brand new ball game as we move into the bottom of the seventh inning. Angel Beltre will lead things off in a tie game. 2-2 two, two through six and a half back here at Armin Wolf Arena in Regensburg, Germany. Tyler Mon, Ryan Roland Smith, a game that Spain really kind of controlled through the first six innings. Then we get into the seventh and a quick burst from South Africa, some savvy base running, an error, and two runs across to get this thing even. And on the second pitch of the bottom of the seventh, the former big leaguer Beltre grounds out to Victor Ngope, whose RBI ground out got his team on the board in the top half of this inning. And one man gone in the bottom of seven. That'll bring up Noel V. Marte. Man, I think, you know, coming into the day today, we're always a little unsure of what types of games are we going to get. Are we going to have, you know, track meets? Is this game going to be 8-7 mm -hmm. going into the sixth? Uh, this has just been a really well-played baseball game. We've got, you know, one error on each side. One of those played a pretty big factor, but we've had a lot of hits. We've had some really good pitching, some really good defense. The base running has been spectacular so far. This is just a great game to kick off this qualifier. Yeah, it really is. And look, look you know, you get, you're going to get those lopsided scores. You're going to get some mismatches, especially once we get to March too right. in that World Baseball Classic 100%. But it's just the little moments that go on. Like, for example, Jared Alaria making that error last inning. I think if you're playing in this, and this is a team effort, you can roll into this inning. And it's important for South Africa to get their team back in, in, in the dugout and, and get keep that momentum going. But he makes that error. He throws that ball away at second base. Runner advances, then scores. You can look at that and say, oh, man, I blew this. Or you can look at that and say, you know what? I only gave up the run. I, I stayed right there. Now all of a sudden it's 2-2. I have to come out and put these and uh, shut these guys down in this inning. He at the start of his his warm up tosses between innings, he backed off the backside of the mound, curl hopped and fired a seed to Kyle Botha. And just I mean that momentum, that energy, the adrenaline in that spot where you come out and all of a sudden you're in a brand new game. That's what you were talking about. It's this is an adrenaline fed qualifier, uh, a tournament that is predicated on that a lot and you know having this game even, all of a sudden, that re-injects you with that. 
And you talk about some of the, the mismatches too. you got a guy, Jared Alario, who plays locally back in South Africa, facing a top 20 major league prospect right now. And just low and away, it's the second straight walk for Noel V. Marte. So he finds himself aboard with one gone in the seventh. Jared Alario is one of the five remaining players on the South Africa squad from the last time they qualified for the WBC in 2009. Donovan Hendricks, Justin Rasmus, today's starter. Kyle Botha, today's starting catcher. Jonathan Phillips, who was over at third base. Donovan Hendricks is the brother of Josh Hendricks, who's over at first base today for South Africa. So this is a team that has a lot of guys who know what it's like to be on the big WBC stage, and they want to get back there. First pitch there for a strike to Edison Valerio. And they're missing some guys, too. Dylan Unsworth is a big miss for them. He's uh, having a baby this week, so he couldn't make it. You know, couldn't, I, I get it. You know, something that they talked about. And, hey, look, you know, is there any way that we can fly you out for a right. game and fly you back? Because that's a huge loss. You mentioned Gift. Runner off from first. The throw to second by Bota is on target. But Marte gets the foot in. And we talked about this early. The replay review is in play for the qualifier, and we will get a challenge here from the South Africa dugout and Andrew Berglund, the manager. At live speed, I thought Marte got in, but we'll take a look at it on the replay. A good job right there from both to even make this close. That looked like Chance, he snuck that foot in, and this is one of those situations, too. We see the video replay in the U.S., and they have all kinds of resources. They have a guy back there in the film room with all different angles to help him out to give him that call. I think for Berglund, the manager of the South African team, you just have to go off your gut to seventh inning. You have to roll the dice here, and hopefully they can overturn this one. Yeah, I will say, Victor Angope was positive that he got that out. He slapped the tag down and immediately pumped his fist. And a reaction like that, I mean, an instant, an instant instinctive reaction of positivity like that makes you think that's a guy who's tagged a lot of base runners out at second base. He's got a good feel for it. But the initial call was safe, so there has to be clear and convincing evidence to overturn it. Pretty good jump from Marte. And we'll slow this right down, get a good look from this angle. Watch that right foot, see if it sneaks by the glove of Victor in, in Gope. Oh, I think it's going to be a real struggle to overturn this call. Yeah, I think that's the issue is it has to be clear to overturn it, and I'm not sure that that angle shows the timing of when Ngope got his glove onto the right leg of Noelvi Marte. So for Noelvi, that is, you know, back-to-back -back walks and now a stolen base, even though he doesn't have a hit, and they will confirm the safe call at second base. So Marte puts himself in scoring position with one out. And he's making things happen. I mean, he doesn't have a hit yet, but on base twice, stealing a bag, putting himself in scoring position in a tie game. He is one of the most exciting young talents in baseball for a reason, and he's out there now at second base with one gone. And we've talked all about his power now. He's showing off the wheels. Obviously has that range at shortstop as well. You know, there's so many comparisons with him and Julio Rodriguez. Same organization. Obviously, Julio Rodriguez is making his major league debut early this year opening day and getting on to be the rookie of the year and Marte right behind him and then got, gets traded over but one thing that separates Julio Rodriguez I think to, is athleticism and the speed the fact that he can play center field the fact he can steal bags stole his 25th just a couple nights ago big swing and a miss there from Valerio that's a huge second out of the inning for Jared Alario strikes out Edison Valerio and with Two gone now. The task will fall to Jesus Uster. He's the best graded tool, according to MLB Pipeline Scouting Evaluation, for Noel V. Marte. Twofold. His power is a 60 grade, and his run tool is 60 grade as well. So he moves well. And, you know, one of the, the big next steps as you grow the ladder is picking your spots on when to try to steal bags, too. And pick the right time there. Did Marte a few pitches ago, but now Usari's trying to be the guy to come through and perhaps break this tie. No balls and a strike on him.
Good breaking ball there, diving across the knees, and the count quickly 0-2. Wow, two big pitches right here from Ilaria. This is, man, we've talked about the WBC being out of, you know, it's been five years since we've had it, and for South Africa, like you said, biggest stage is this right here. No bigger at bat right here for Jared Ilario to get this strike out. 0-2 coming, high with a fastball. I think he's got to get back to that breaking ball right here. Showing that fastball, showing the two options, basically. You have to protect against. Throw that big slider down and away and get a swing and miss. 33-year-old right-hander deals, and the 1-2 is down. So we're going to take that extra breath in between pitches and just execute. Marte away from second. 2-2 pitch is just off the outside corner, and the count is full. The entire South Africa infield started shifting its weight to try to head into that dugout on the third base side. Didn't get the strike three call from Roberto La Madrid, our home plate umpire from Mexico. Good call right there. You can see it gets emotional. You just start to beg a little bit because you're dying to get that pitch goal go your way. Full count on the cleanup, man. 3-2 runner moving and a liner in the air to center. Benji Smith over diving and can't make the catch. And Spain is back into the lead. Usari's around second. He'll dig for third. Victor and Gope's throw is just off line. And Spain retakes the advantage. It's 3-2 in the seventh. That would have been as spectacular a catch as you will ever see. That would have made every highlight reel 100%. And it looked like he had he got glove to that ball in that situation, but it just bounced right out. Just the momentum of the ball. That ball was crushed. Oh, just missed that by an inch. Off the tip of the fingers of the glove of Benji Smith, who made every percentage of a human effort possible to make that catch and just couldn't pull it in. So it turns into an RBI triple for Benji Smith. And Smith may have been hurt on that play. He's over at third and now being visited by members of the Spain staff as we get a visit to the mound from Eric Threets. And again, just a little pep talk right here. There's no strategy involved in these kind of mound visits. It's just a quick reminder. It's like, you're all good. Keep executing pitches. A little surprise there, though. You saw a couple of fastballs, the one missing the pitch before where Alario was hoping to get the call. And then going back to the fastball there in three, a 3-2 three count in that situation. He had him looking silly on that slider as well. Man, what an effort, though, from Benji Smith. Benji Smith was shaded a little bit toward left center, so he had to run a long way to get to that ball. And, I mean, like you said, that would have been on every single highlight reel tonight, not only in this country, but I would imagine back home for the two of us in the United States, probably back home for Benji Smith in South Africa. And just out of his reach, it appears as though Jesus is okay over there at third, so the stories will post up there a potential insurance run for Spain here in the bottom of the seventh as the world's number 19 ranked national team program will send the DH Chris Quitzer into the batter's box with two gone and a man a third and Benji Spence had a big day as well at the plate two hits two for three but nothing bigger when you have that big opportunity to make that play. Great effort. So the one-out walk to Marte comes back to bite South Africa. Stole second and then came around on that drive off the bat of his first baseman. One ball, one strike count on Quitzer. Two 
two and one. Outfield swung around a little bit toward the pull side for the left-handed hitting Quitzer. Lario home on 2-1. That'll get out of play third base side. A battle for it on the roof of the snack shack. It's a pretty impressive catch by the dude in the Knights Field jacket. <laughs> Showing off his prize. <laughs> yeah, PA announcer even let him have it too. Look there you see Adam Jones over on the right of your screen saying it's not as good as my catch at Peco Park. That's but right. nice play off the roof. <laughs> Still one and two. Quits are continuing to battle here in the seventh. Lario comes set once more. One two pitch on the way. The Spain bullpen down the right field line is actually not visible to us from where we are. It's There's a batting cage in front of it that's covered by a roof. The bullpen's out beyond on the other side, and even though we can't see who is working down there, it does look like there may be somebody throwing. There he is, Adam Jones, former longtime major leaguer in the United States and in Nippon Professional Baseball in Japan with the Oryx Buffaloes over the last few years. A shot in the air to left field, and it backs up. Tyrone Milne, who can't make the play, and Spain will add an insurance run in the seventh. Quitzer into second, and it is a 4-2 to two lead for Spain. Just as soon as South Africa had rallied to tie this game, Spain's got a two-run advantage right back. And you see that route from Tyrone Tara, uh, Tara Milne going straight back on that ball, didn't do the drop step, didn't get a good route on this ball, got tripped up by it. Ball just kind of kept kind of uh, carrying too, especially off the le left hand bat as well. It's got that little bit of that tail to it, kind of takes you by surprise and got over his head. Not only that, but this is the first time that these fielders are getting a chance to read balls off the bat in this ballpark. Yesterday, for team workouts, we didn't get a chance to use this field because they wanted to keep it playable through the rain to get everything started today. So everybody was on the backfield here in Regensburg yesterday. And with the way, you know, Milne making that play there, the struggles that Justin Connell has had on a couple of balls and right, it kind of makes you wonder if guys just aren't picking up drives to the outfield off the bat very quickly. Yeah, it's been interesting. This guy at the play, Connell has had some interesting plays and routes in right field. And he drives one down the line and left. This is going to add another run. It drops over to Milne's right side as he'll scoop it up and fire it in. But Connell's got his third hit of the day. And Justin Connell makes it a three-run lead for Spain in the seventh. Man, Spain taking advantage and starting to pad this lead. It's amazing the momentum, the switch. South Africa tying this game up. Get into a situation where you had... A two-strike count a couple of hitters ago. Now, all of a sudden, you're staring down a 5-2 lead. You know, Tyrone Milne, that last ball out to left, he had to play it over to the glove side. He kind of shifted over that direction, and then this one pulled down the line. He had to race and play it toward his own bullpen, and that's going to spell the end of the day for Jared Alario. So a uh, tough turn of events for Alario here in the seventh as he sees a Couple of run scoring base hits in this inning. Add to the lead for Spain. South Africa rallied to knot this thing at two runs apiece in the top of the seventh. Spain has bounced back with a three spot here in the bottom half of the seventh inning as South Africa will go to the bullpen. A really good effort from Jared Alario for this first couple of innings, but we move along here in the seventh. Spain back in front, 5-2.
New arm into the game for South Africa as we move along here in the bottom of the seventh inning, a game that was just a few minutes ago tied up 2-2, now a 5-2 Spain lead. And the right-hander Daniel Mendelssohn takes over on the pitcher's mound for South Africa. Mendelssohn, the second reliever we've seen in this game after a terrific starting effort by Justin Erasmus, who was able to limit Spain to one run over five stellar innings. He worked around four walks. And the task right now for Daniel Mendelssohn is just get the final out in this inning. There's another man out there in scoring position for Spain. Just got to get this thing back into the dugout for South Africa. And no doubt Daniel Mendelssohn has pitched on this field, on this mound before he has played here in the German League. Got a very big ovation from this crowd when they announced him as the new arm into the game. First man he sees is Lester Galvan, who is out of the seven spot in the order. Galvan tried to bunt to sacrifice himself last inning after a leadoff single by Justin Connell, but he ended up reaching. Up there at second base is Connell. Three hits in four trips today. The leadoff homer in the fourth. A leadoff single and a run scored in the sixth and an RBI single here in the seventh. A one from Mendelssohn. Spain now five runs on 11 hits in this game. Two runs on five hits on the other side for South Africa. Two balls and a strike. Kyle both able to keep that one close. And that's all you're thinking about. Get, just get that out, get back in the dugout, just trying to generate something. Man, what a turn of events when you think about that ball. I'm sure we'll get another look at it too off the center fielder, Benji Smith. Yeah, drive into center field by Jesus Ustaris and a flat out sprint and dive and Benji Smith just saw it go off the tip of his full extension glove. And that changed the entire complexion of this inning because it scored the go ahead run and everything that has followed has come because of that. Starry scoring on the RBI double by Chris Quitzer. Justin Connell with the RBI single to score Quitzer. And then moving up to second on the throw as this one's bounced out to short. Smith's going to have to hustle it to first, but he does so in time to get that final out. And that retires the side in the seventh. But Spain brings home three. And today's home team is back out in front. Our score as we head to the eighth, Spain five, South Africa two.
the top of the eighth inning, Nelson Prada and his squad closing in on a potential day one victory in game number one of the 2022 World Baseball Classic qualifier. From Regensburg, Germany, it's a 5-2 to two lead for Spain over South Africa as we move into the heart of the South Africa order with Kyle Botha, the catcher, leading things off and taking the first pitch, ball one from Vicente Campos. Didn't get a chance to really tell you a whole lot about Campos last inning. Came out of this game in relief of Daniel Alvarez, who struggled, gave up two runs, only one of them earned, but was given the hook after an inning and two-thirds in relief. So Campos, who is a cousin of big leaguers Alcides Escobar and Ronald Acuna Jr., 30-year-old right-hander on for his first full inning. He's got some big league time himself, too, with the D-backs. Back in 2016, pitching the one game, five and two thirds in relief. And a leadoff walk for Kyle Botha to get things started in the eighth. Yeah, but you heard about uh, Nelson Prada talking about some of his arms coming out of his bullpen. This is the, this is one of them right here, Vicente Capo, Campos. For a lot of these teams, it's just about getting to those back end arms, some of that velocity, some of that stuff. Guys who've pitched at this level before on this stage. Now the DH, Chris Byers, who is 0 for 2 with a walk today. South Africa, I mean, the momentum you feel being able to rally and tie this game in the top of the seventh inning you are just sky high and then you drop with a thud giving up three in the bottom half of the seventh and now to try to rally yourselves from that letdown that's the task here with the leadoff man on in a three-run game in the eighth yeah and you, how that <laughs> how that entire inning unraveled as well you know when you think about you know first of all you get the first guy out Marte, you know, over Marte, we've talked a lot about him being one of the biggest prospects in baseball. Yeah, you're going to pitch around him a little bit. He walks. You get a strikeout, and all this happening with two outs in that inning. Big cut and miss there on 0-2 as Byers was fooled, and he's gone for out number one in the eighth. Just in case... This game gets knotted again. As we start extra innings, teams will start each half inning with a man in scoring position, and that runner will be the uh, last man to make the out the previous inning. It'll be the uh, ghost runner, if you will, quote unquote. The start of extra innings with a man in scoring position was actually first implemented in the international game, the 2008 Beijing Olympics as we got a pinch hitter into the game for South Africa here. Brandon Bouillon will take the that bat out of the five spot in place of Josh Hendricks. I feel like everyone's used to saying the ghost runner, but you mentioned it too. That was something that was implemented first on the international, in the interna international game because obviously, you know, it's tournament style play. You have to move those games along. They can't go 18 innings. And now it's just a staple in the big leagues. Were you, a, were you a fan of that when you when when you saw that in the big leagues? I know everyone, it's so 50-50, I feel like. You know, in the big leagues, not as much. Uh, they implemented it in the minor leagues beforehand. I think especially in the minor leagues it makes sense because games there are much more about development than they are about wins and losses, although that's coming from a, a dude who did. There are not many times that I get to talk about my career because it's not impressive as pitching in the big leagues and pitching in the World Baseball Classic. However, I did broadcast two 20-plus inning games in the Carolina League in back-to-back -back wow. seasons solo for each of them. The first one, I was the radio voice of the, the Myrtle Beach Pelicans in the, in the Carolina League. We had a day-night doubleheader at Winston-Salem. Played nine innings at one in the afternoon and then 20 innings at seven o'clock that night. The next year in Kinston, North Carolina, we played 23 innings. Lost both those games, by the way. 
23 innings. I think I was on the air for like six and a half hours solo <laughs> that day. So that, when I saw that, I was like, oh, the, the tiebreaker rule is fantastic. The big league level, I'm not as wild about it, but I do understand what it does. It does immediately generate more excitement. Um, it's, it feels a little more artificial to me at the major league level. The minor league level, it's, you know, it's not all about the outcome of the game necessarily. Uh, what are your, where do you stand on it? I like it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I feel like I was one of the first people to say, yeah, I kind of like this. It just adds a, you know, an, a different element, another element, the way you got to pitch around and the way you, you know, you try and work for that, that second run because you know, you know, the next team coming up, they're going to have a good chance of getting it. it it's, to me, I, I, I'm a fan of it. I, I, but I'm, look, I'm pretty open to new rules, to be honest with you. And new ways not to speed the game up, but just to add, you know, add different factors, add, add different parts of the game that, you know, it's kind of like a, I hate to use this, you know, comparison, but, but a shootout in yeah. hockey. Yeah. Or even when they, you know, they go four on four in, in the NHL. I love that. Yeah. It's just, it's a different way to play the game. It does add such uh, an element of urgency in extra innings. 3-2 on the way here, and Bouillon takes strike three as he gets rung up. Thought it was ball four, but instead he will head back to the dugout. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Vicente Campos, and two gone after the leadoff walk. Now this pitch clearly a strike. This is a situation 3-2. Yeah, you want to generate some base runners for sure, but you have to be swinging in that count right there. That's one of those classic too-close-to-take kind of pitches. Absolutely. So with two gone, here's Tyrone Milne, the left fielder. I see Team France hanging out. Yeah, we have seen. It was a really good point you mentioned earlier. I said, ah, it's so cool. These teams are all here to watch. And you said they're also trying to learn about what they're right. going to face in South Africa or Spain if they play these teams going forward. And I hadn't really thought about it in that context, but that was something that we heard from a lot of managers yesterday is you come in with a lot of unknowns as the 1-0 has bounced back up the middle and past the slide of Marte into center field. So with two gone, it's first and second, and don't look, but the tying run now at the plate for South Africa. And for the South Africans, we've seen this all game long. You have to generate traffic. They're not going to take you out of the ballpark and tie this up with a home run. You've got to inch your, inch your way back into this game. I think, too, and just back to that point you mentioned about some of the, the scatter reports, you can't get too caught up in, in only a couple things you see. If you see. If you see patterns great or something that's strikingly an advantage to you, like, for example, you see someone just missing a breaking ball by three feet, yeah, sure, put that in your scatter report. But it's so difficult. We've talked about this the entire game and even in the opening. It's so tough to have a really good feel of what you're going to face because all of a sudden you sit up in these stands and you see something, you write that down and you cling to it. It can be too anecdotal in this situation because you're literally facing the unknown half the time. First pitch to Benji Smith. In the air to right, Justin Connell is there to make the grab. Thought he lost it for a second, threw his hands out, and he's had some issues spotting the ball out there in right today, but he snares it for the final out. South Africa leaves a pair in the eighth. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Spain in front, 5-2.
Bottom of the eighth inning, Spain looking to add some insurance to a three-run lead as we move to potentially the final half inning of the day for today's home team. Back at Armin Volf Arena in Regensburg, Tyler Mon, Ryan Roland Smith. This was a 2-0 lead for Spain going to the top of the seventh. South Africa rallied for two to tie things, and Spain immediately bouncing back with three more runs to regain control. And as we head into the bottom of eight, it'll be the veteran catcher, Gabriel Lino, to lead things off. It'll be followed by Oscar Angulo, the second baseman, and then Angel Beltre back at the top of the order, the center fielder. South Africa's got some equipment out of the on-deck circle. We'll get that cleared away. And and get to play. Told you we had some South Africa fans in the house. Good yeah. contingent here in Regensburg. Just pretty awesome at this amazing ballpark. I'm going to put you on the spot right here. How far is the flight from, say, Johannesburg oh, man. to Germany? Let's go. Come on, Tyler. Man. You're, you're an international man of mystery. I feel, like, I feel like it's got to be like 10, 12 hours. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I have you don't no even idea. know? <laughs> I, I thought no you would, like, secretly Google nah. it over there. No, absolutely not. I got to look. Flight from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. First <laughs> batter in the face, the right-handed hurling Daniel Mendelssohn is Gabriel Lino. I looked it up to Munich because that is... Uh, the place that we all flew into. Well, I started talking too soon. I said I looked it up to Munich, but it doesn't. It doesn't give, give me flight time yet. <laughs> I have to pretend to be booking this flight from Lufthansa. <laughs> That'd be accidentally booking a flight <laughs> right there. <laughs> Just thinking that. Well, the good news, I don't think my credit card goes that high anyway. <laughs> I got like a, I got like a school kids balance. They're like, here's two hundred and fifty dollars. You can get one good grocery trip out of this. Okay, I'll tell you. Well, this comes with a stop. Swing and a fly ball, well struck to right field. Back on it is Carelsa, who is able to make the catch. And even, you know, Jason Carelsa, who has not been tested a lot today, that's actually his first put out. He started going back over his right yeah. shoulder, turned around and played back, or started going back to his right, looking over his left shoulder, and then flipped things around and went the other way to get that out recorded. Now, early in this game, I was going to blame you know some of the rain falling. It's going to mess up your judgment a little bit. But we've seen this left field, center field, right field, some strange routes out there. Maybe bouncing off that big gray wall over here by the third base dugout. All right, what do you got? What's the length? What's the flight length? So with a shot, with a shot, with a stop, uh, it is 13 hours and 10 minutes. Wow. With one stop. And then the return flight is 14 hours and 10 minutes. So I'm imagining just like if you went straight through, probably 12, 12 and a half hours. That is a long haul. That is. Yeah, it is not an easy trip to get here from Johannesburg. A liner down the left field line, that's foul off the bat of Angulo. To get here from Spain, far easier, which we know because Adam Jones is here, who lives in Barcelona, apparently. How about that? Yeah, Found that's that pretty out cool. today. Good for him. He's now all of a sudden international, played some time in Japan, had some time playing in Japan. Mr. WBC. We've also got one fan on the third base side behind the third base dugout who is rocking all of his Netherlands baseball gear. Netherlands not needing to qualify this time around. They obviously have played such great ball in, in recent WBCs, as you see Angulo spinning out of the way of that pitch up and in. One, two on the ground, pounded to second, and Gope is there, two gone. It's a Netherlands team that, I mean, you talk about the progression from tournament to tournament. 2009, upsetting a Dominican Republic twice, moving on past that opening round. 2013, they played in the semifinals. The amount of talent that has come out, not just from the Netherlands proper, but of course from, you know, Curaçao and, and the, the members of the Kingdom of the Netherlands as the Dutch Baseball Federation is known uh, on the international stage. That is a really, really fun national team. Back to the top of the order, and Angel Beltre. Yeah, you've had some greats. Andrew Jones coming out of there. Angelton Simmons, great shortstop, great big league career. Jerickson Profile. Kenley Jansen, closer for the Atlanta Braves now. Kenley Jansen, who, at least in WBC terms, was initially known as catcher Kenley Jansen. That's he, right. For that 2009 team, 
he was the backstop. And then in 2017, uh, came into a game, you know, at Dodger Stadium uh, with his California Love entrance song blasting, playing for his, his home country. His man, oh man, Kyle Botha caught that one off of the foul at the plate. And immediately, his manager, Andrew Berglund, out to attend to him, along with South Africa's training staff. It looks like Kyle's okay. That is just like, you get so stunned as a catcher by getting rocked by a foul ball that way. When the initial wave of pain passes over you, then it's, you just gotta kinda try to calm yourself down. Yeah, you can see a couple smiles underneath that mask. Get another look at it right here. This foul ball, it bounces too. Oh, no, it's bounced off the knee. Straight to that spot. Two, one. Before the end of this WBC qualifier, we're going to get a foul ball. I oh, just have sure. that feeling. It, it's going to have to be, like, perfectly placed in order to escape the net and come into the booth, yeah, we're but, gonna get one. But from this angle, there's no soft landing. It'll be a oh, it'll be a linea a right laser. back to us. Yeah, be ready. And I'll make a spectacular <laughs> catch. You will for sure. Probably with my face. Two, two, three, and two. Maine World Baseball Classic Tournament, the full event coming up in March of next year. Two teams from this qualifier and our qualifier coming up in a couple of weeks in Panama City. We'll move on. Four total teams from the 12 taking part in these qualifying events. And man, we are off to a real good day one. A five to two lead for Spain as this game moves toward the ninth. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Angel Beltre waiting. Daniel Mendelson comes home and a fly ball in the air toward very shallow left. Tyrone Milne was way out there and left. So it's the shortstop Tyler Smith who is there to make the grab, and that will retire the side. We move to the ninth. Spain trying to close out a day one victory with a 5-2 lead over South Africa. New arm in to the game for Spain to try to close out a day one victory here in the 2022 World Baseball Classic qualifiers. The right-hander, Reiner Cruz, as one of the teams for tonight's nightcap, the France national team taking in possibly the final half inning of this one here at Armin Wolf Baseball Arena in Regensburg. Reiner Cruz, the third arm out of that Spanish bullpen this afternoon. Daniel Alvarez gave up a couple of runs, one earned in an inning and two-thirds. Vicente Campos, an inning in the third, one hit, no runs, a walk and two strikeouts. And for Reiner Cruz, 
three parts of three seasons in the big leagues. Most significant time was 2012. He had 55 innings for the Houston Astros. Now pitching in Mexico. You see a good fastball, good slider against this South African team. Trying to get something going. Tie this thing up. Go ahead. And this is a pinch hitter for South Africa as well. Dale Feltman who will take the bat in this spot in place of Jason Carelsa. That one grooved in there for a strike. The other thing to factor in too, Tyler, is the fact this is double elimination. South Africa, right. you know, are so close this entire game. They tied it up, obviously. They kept it within uh, striking distance, tied it up. Obviously, that big break from the, the Spanish team. But, man, you, I mean, you're staring down the barrel. One more loss, and that's it. You're done. All that prep, putting that roster together, constructing you know, the roster, making sure guys are available. All the time put in. Get this team together. Three balls and two strikes on Dale Feltman. And the 3-2 is down low for ball four, a leadoff base runner in the ninth. So here's what we're looking at for this WBC qualifier in Regensburg. You see top left of your screen, that's where we are right now, South Africa in Spain. The winner of this game moves on to face the Czech Republic tomorrow. The loser of this game will move on to game number five, two days from now, uh, or check that, game number six, two days from now, to take on the loser of Germany's matchup tomorrow. So that's the modified double elimination format. Great Britain and France will square off tonight. Czech Republic and Germany awaiting the winners of these two games tomorrow. So on the on the one hand, you know, it's tough because you're staring down the barrel, like you said, of potentially being eliminated. On the other hand, you've played pretty well if you're South Africa, and you've got to be happy with the fact that even if you're eliminated, uh, or even if you lose this game, you still live to fight another day and right. keep playing. Pinch runner aboard at first. Derek Bayless will take over the base running duties for South Africa. And Victor and Gope hit ninth in the order has been a big factor in this game. Knocking that ball down early on to prevent a run. Big, uh, getting the first RBI of the game for, for the team South Africa. See if he can generate something. Get on base, big, big base hit. Reiner Cruz struggling a little bit with his command. Derek Bayless actually listed on this roster as one of the pitchers for South Africa. But getting a look over at first for his wheels as Victor Ngope takes the ball on the breaking pitch outside, two and one. And this is where you just have to wait out these at-bats. You're facing stuff right here. What I mean by that is Ryan Cruz, he's got that big breaking ball. He's got that velo plus velocity. So one element here, he obviously doesn't have the command. You've got to make him throw strikes. Good swing. Count even at two and two. South Africa, last inning after giving the lead back to Spain, or more accurately seeing Spain retake the lead. I mean, the effort from Benji Smith on the dive in center to nearly make one of the most spectacular catches you will ever see, which actually led to the go-ahead run scoring. South Africa ended up bringing the tying run to the plate last inning, trailing this game by three. Now they're one base runner away from doing the same here in the ninth. And all that with two outs as well. That walk to Marte gets into scoring position on a stolen base. and Stolen base and went to review. That's too. right. It was so close at second. Two two on the way. And Gope staying alive. He fouls another one off. Man, this is a situation right here. If you're Ryan Cruz, at some point you have to be able to land that big slider, that big breaking ball of his. Hasn't been able to do that yet. So you can see uh, Victor and Gope is sitting on that fastball all day long. Timed it up. I know he's fouling the back. Ryan Cruz, a guy with previous 
WBC experience puts the 2-2 low and the count is full. And you can see the non-verbals right there from Ngope. You can see that from a mile away, that breaking ball. Three balls, two strikes. Pinch runner Bayless at first. And Gope waiting. 3-2 on the way from Cruz. Terrific plate appearance here from Victor and Gope. Victor, the sacrifice bunt in the third, a line out in the fifth, the ground out that scored a run in the seventh. That actually got South Africa on the board on the way to tying this game briefly at 2-2. Trying to get his team on track here in the ninth. Three, two coming again, and another foul ball. <laughs> Good at bat. You can't say enough. Just shitting on that fastball. And Ronald Cruz at this point doesn't feel like he has that secondary option to land that breaking ball. Already 15 pitches thrown in this inning by Reiner Cruz. He is set once more. Another 3-2 pitch. And Gope down the line in right. Connell in pursuit. And it's going to get past him yet again. Flying around third base is Bayless. He will get held there. And it's second and third. Tying run coming to the plate for South Africa in the ninth. And what an at-bat from Ngope in that situation. Like we talked about, you recognize that breaking ball early, understand that Reiner Cruz is struggling to command that pitch. And all of a sudden, you are going to get nothing but a healthy diet of fastballs and hits this ball to right field. You know, again, that's a shallow route out there from Justin Connell. This one, at least on that angle, he's sort of already chasing it back in the direction of the outfield wall, but that's another, that's three yeah. balls that he's kind of struggled to, to see out there. Yeah, we've seen plenty of that. Hey, the other factor is with this, with Ronald Cruz, we've talked about these pitch counts. Now, all of a sudden, he's at 20 pitches. If he goes to 30, he's going to need the day off tomorrow, so you can't use him. He is the closer for the Spanish team. So something to think about here. That is a really good point, because if you win this game, but you lose your closer for tomorrow, all of a sudden, you move into that matchup against the Czech Republic, potentially down the arm that you want to see on the mound trying to finish off wins. Something to keep in mind as you see the, the pitcher use limitations. A former pitcher, I'm going to let you explain it. Yeah, we can see it here. And I've had to deal with this too on the international stage. But yeah, it, it's a couple of things. Number one, if it's that big, big pitch count of 30 plus, you're going to have a, a day rest. Uh, you can't just overuse some of your guys. The other thing is too, if you throw two consecutive days, you have to have a day off as well. So Jonathan Phillips, another opportunity. It was Phillips who came through in the seventh with an RBI single up the middle on a rope to bring in the game-tying run. And the captain of this team, one for four, added a stolen base that inning. Now with two men in scoring position and his team down three. 0-2. Oh and, and just getting beat by velocity. Absolutely up in the strike zone. And Ronald Cruz can smell that too. All of a sudden, you see a, a, a hitter react that way, way behind that fastball. Jonathan Phillips has to cheat on this pitch. See that ball early. 0 2 coming. There it was. Play. Galvan, Beltre, and Connell left, center, and right. Valerio and Marte, third and short. Angulo Ustari, second and first. Gabrielino behind the plate. You see this crowd here in Regensburg getting into it in the ninth. 0-2 pitch coming, and another foul down the right field line. This South Africa team is making Reiner Cruz work in the ninth inning. 20 pitches now for him. Here comes the 0-2 again. Ball one to Phillips. That's a good feeling too. If you 
if you're Jonathan Phillips, you are dealing with some velo. Talked about that. All of a sudden, now you're starting to time it up. You're starting to cheat a little bit. And then you see that breaking ball from a mile away. Pitchy struggling to command. Feel much better about your chances here. One, two coming. Uh, check swing. Did Phillips hold up? Yes. Two balls and two strikes. Man, if the rest of this WBC qualifier in Regensburg is anything like game one, we are in for some fun over the next few days. Here comes a fastball right here from Ryan Cruz. Let's see if Phillips can catch it. 2-2 two, two left side and snared by Valerio. A race to the bag and back in safely Derek Bayless. Holy cow, a laser to third. And for Edison Valerio, the presence of mind to snare that get up and try to beat the runner back to the bag and it's out number one in the ninth i'll tell you what if you're a team spain in this situation all of a sudden that takes your breath away if you're a team south africa you break your excuse me your heart just seems to break just a little bit more in that situation what an opportunity a chance to get a pitch to drive from jonathan phillips crush that ball too so one gone now here's tyler smith First pitch up and in, ball one. And you can see the slow walk back, bat over his head from the captain of this team. Man, you'll never forget that moment. 1-0. In the air down the left field line, Galvan will watch it trend foul. Thought about going for the dive at that last second. That's kind of a smart, I don't know if he makes the catch anyway, but if you make that dive and make the catch, there's a very good chance that run scores from third. Yeah, you can look at that two ways. Though. You know, you get the out. Obviously, you, at this, in this situation, you're trying to get out. So you, you want to get that second out, and obviously the runner at, at second, he's not going to be the tying or go ahead. Here's the 1-1. One, one. But really, no chance anyway catching that ball. Plus, you don't want to hurt yourself either, you know? Yeah, true. <laughs> and there is not a ton of foul ground down the line. No. Galvan shifted way over that direction. Beltre the same in center. And pretty much straight away right for Justin Connell. Here's the one, two. Count even. Man, Ryan Cruz is laboring through this inning. Already at 27 pitches. Looks like he's going to be unavailable tomorrow. 2-2 Two -two pitch to Tyler Smith. This is a very disciplined inning from South Africa. Guys being able to go out and just spoil pitches that they don't want. Two balls, two strikes, one gone. Runners at second and third in a game. South Africa trails by three. Another 2-2 two -two from Cruz. This one served softly out towards center, but now it's going to tail out over the head of Beltre, and that will bring home both. It's going to be a two-run double from Tyler Smith and the tying run in scoring position for South Africa in the ninth. That came off the end of the bat. I thought that was a bloop to center, and that thing carried out over Beltre in a hurry. And it brings home both Bayless and Ngope and the tying run at second for South Africa in the ninth. Yeah, you can look at the swing. He's caught out in front, too. He goes one-handed on this. And like he said, too, Tyler, it looked like that ball was just going to parachute in front of the center fielder in that situation, Beltre. And he gets by, and that ball just seemed to keep carrying. Now, all of a sudden, within one run, the South African team. Not only that, you have probably spoiled tomorrow for Spain's closer, and you find yourselves in a spot where you got to get your bullpen going now. And South Africa's had activity down there down the left field line, but potentially you're playing to move this thing to extras or even try to finish off a win in the bottom of the ninth. And you've got another one of your veterans at the plate right now in Kyle Botha. A one from Cruz. That one stays in on both. Uh, it's one and one. Man, that breaking ball has been problematic from the ex-big leaguer in this situation. 
just nothing doing. South Africa, good at bats too, man. The presence of mind to just sit fastball and get pitches to hit. Kyle Botham, one of the heart and soul guys for this South African national team. He first played for his country at 17 years old at the 2005 Baseball World Cup. He was named tournament MVP in the 2019 Africa Cup. Hit 583 in that tournament. Three home runs in a semifinal game against Burkina Faso and the final against Uganda. Spread over those two games. And now here he is trying to tie his team in the ninth. Skies it on the infield. Valerio, two gone. A big out right there for Spain. So now it falls on the shoulders of the designated hitter, Chris Byers. 0 for 3 with a walk today. And the Cape Town product who plays for Untouchables Paderborn, maybe the coolest team name <laughs> of all the clubs on this South Africa squad. The DH out of the cleanup spot into the batter's box with a tying run at second base here in the ninth. Oh, good, pi good pitch to hit, too. That fastball out over the middle of the plate. Coming in toward the mound, too. That always gives you a little anxiety as an infielder. First pitch to Byers is ball one. Reiner Cruz creeping up on 35 pitches in the ninth inning. Number 35 is the 1-0 offering. Fouled away. Spain took a 1-0 lead in the bottom of the fourth, added a run in the sixth. South Africa responded with two in the seventh to tie it. Spain immediately retook the lead with three in the bottom of that inning, and now two home for South Africa here in the ninth. 1-1 one, one is in tight, two balls and a strike. Yeah, Cruz is just laboring, really is. And yet Justin Rasmus, who's so good for South Africa, five strong innings, gave up the home run. And Medrano for Team Spain. Two balls and two strikes. And hand over the bullpen. And it's been a good start to these qualifiers. Yeah, we are set for some fun if this first game is any indication of what's to come over the next five days. Two so, games tomorrow, two games Sunday, two games Tuesday, and then one on Wednesday. Chris Byers trying to extend game number one. 2-2 two -two pitch from Cruz. Fouled away once more. Just trying to get to that fastball. Again, the South African team. Man, heartbreaker right here if it stays 5-4. And you talk about, like we talked about, prepping for this, getting your team ready, what this means for your, your federation back in South Africa, the funding which is involved for your program as a sport, all these things that factor into this. But they'll get another chance. Another 2-2 on the way from Cruz. Got him swinging on an elevated fastball, and that will do it. A gallant effort from South Africa, but Spain too much on this Friday afternoon. An impressive game number one for this WBC 2022 qualifying event, and Spain moves on with win number one. Handshakes for the first time here in Regensburg belong to this Spain national team as they take a 5-4 victory over South Africa. And it did not come without its drama, but it comes for Spain nonetheless. And for Nelson Prada and his side, that's all that matters. We talked about how important it is to get out to a good start because game one, a victory, puts you into the driver's seat, gets you on to day number two. You're not waiting around and headed into that loser's bracket. Yeah, when the two starters were able to calm the offense down, all of a sudden there were some big momentum shifts within this game. And, man, South Africa getting so close. Look, we've had a chance to talk to all these teams about what this means for the, for the uh, national program and to get through to the World Baseball.
Football Classic again. Um, right now you can see South Africa out our window saying thank you to some of the fans. But they get a chance to fight another day. But again, this what a great way to start this qualifier off. A one-run game kicks us off in game number one. And we got game number two coming up here That's in right. just a little while. The first of our double header today as this evening, Great Britain and France in a fantastic baseball rivalry. They'll square off at 7 o'clock tonight. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of World Baseball Classic Incorporated and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. We have had so much fun for game number one here in Regensburg, and we are inside of three hours until game number two. For Ryan Roland-Smith, our producer Tim Fryer, and everyone else, my name is Tyler Mon. Spain over South Africa, 5-4. to four. We'll talk to you tonight for Great Britain and France.